Number 10, Surtsey Island. On part one of this list, we mentioned the global seed vaults. Well, for part two, we need to mention the island where seeds are forbidden. In fact, any human activity is forbidden. This island is also pretty new. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, and scientists are using the fresh face of land to study what it looks like to, well, not have a Starbucks. They're studying ecosystems without any human interference, which I think is really creepy, but also quite interesting. Scientists studying the land here have to just follow one rule, and that rule is no seeds. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like, obviously. One time, a scientist had to go number two, and in turn, he accidentally grew a tomato plant. He pooped a tomato plant out. Not really, there was a seed somewhere in there. That would be painful. They acted fast and got rid of the plant in order to not interfere with their study, but like, what a weird job. Guy can't even take a at work. How stressful is that? Coming in at number nine, we have telescope ghouls. Whoa, 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 look up at the top of the James Webb Space Telescope. Do you see what I see? Are these the ghosts of dead astronauts or technicians? Or maybe they're alien apparitions? This photo by NASA's Chris Gunn is incredible, and he has aptly titled it Ghosts and Mirrors for obvious reasons. So it turns out that the picture taken in the Goddard Space Flight Center's spacecraft system development and integration facility clean room is taken with a super long exposure, all the while ultraviolet lights were being shone over the telescope to look for contamination. Now the result is this spooky picture. Sounds like a reasonable explanation, right? Some may say too reasonable. Joking, but this telescope may well capture some spooky images of its very own in the future. It's the successor to Hubble, and it's off to explore the universe in March 2021. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there, stand up. How much does this exosolar planet look like the Eye of Sauron at number eight? Like, creepily so. Did J.R.R. Tolkien know about the formal hut when he wrote The Lord of the Rings in 1937? If he didn't, perhaps he foreshadowed it. Get a load of this picture. This is Formal Hout B in orbit around Formal Hout. The exoplanet is also known as Dagon. It's an extrasolar object and it orbits a star that gives it its name. How far away is this terrifying eye formation? Only 25 light years. The 2012 images from the Hubble Space Telescope are terrifying. The name Dagon in mythology is a Jewish deity that represents a half man, half fish. Just a side note there for you. Coming in at number seven, did NASA capture an alien moon base? And also, did they accidentally release pictures of it? Hmm. According to some conspiracists, then yeah, they did. Have a look at these and tell me what you think. Is this alien evidence? Conspiracists' YouTube channel Secure Team 10 claimed that these images were proof of an alien base on the moon. The YouTube channel has 1.7 million subscribers, so a lot of people are watching their content. Their channel is filled with moon conspiracies, and they think that these images are a smoking gun for NASA. Ufologist and hoax. Buster Scott Brando said that the images used by Secure Team 10 were low quality and low resolution. He seemed to think that the images are just an optical illusion. Who knows though? Another classic from the Daily Express, we have alien astronauts caught on camera at number six. Some think that Mars rover Curiosity captured aliens, others think that it's a widespread conspiracy that humans are already on Mars. The first manned Mars mission is set to begin within the next 10 years, but some are saying that the photos taken by Curiosity and published by NASA already show that there are humans on the red planet. Some people think that these shadow images show astronauts working on the rover to repair it. Others say that the droids show humanoid looking aliens. Now the conspiracists say that NASA didn't realize how much they were showing when the images were released into the public domain. So is it aliens or are humans already up on Mars? If so, why would that be hidden from us? Or do these pictures have a more logical explanation? US UFO conspiracist good old Scott C. Waring said that this just goes to show the public that the rover is being maintained by humans on Mars and that there are other spacecraft kept secret from the public that can carry peers to Mars in just a few minutes. You know what Scott, I don't know about that one. Okay, these death eaters living out there in space terrify me at number five. The Harry Potter fans in this video will probably be just as freaked out by this as I am. I don't like them. Get a load of what is lurking in the mist of the Carina Nebula. To me, these are straight up Death Eaters waiting to suck out my soul, but actually, they're supposed to be knots of dark molecular gas. 
knots of dark molecular gas waiting to suck up my soul, right? These clouds of gas surround the Great Nebula in Carina, which used to be one of the brightest stars in the sky in the 1800s, but now it's significantly faded. This maybe lends credence to my whole sucking theory, right? Okay, fine, they probably aren't Death Eaters, but still, they're spooky. This picture freaks me out. Coming into number four, we have the Hand of God. NASA released this x-ray image of light detected by NASA's Chanda X-ray Observatory in 2014. Can you see why they called it the Hand of God? Because it kind of looks like, you know. So this is actually a pulsar wind nebula, a stellar corpse that spins rapidly, firing a particle wind. NASA themselves are mystified by the shape. Alongside the image on their website, they wrote, One of the big mysteries of this object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way to make it look like a hand, or if the material is in fact shaped like a hand. Now a lot of people do genuinely believe that this is God's mark in the universe, like the eye that cropped up earlier. Now I'm not too convinced, but I'd love to know what you think. Ah, we have a famous Mars picture that caused a stir at number three. We have Bigfoot on Mars. Mars's now defunct robot rover Spirit captured this image in late 2007. Who this? A Rudy nudie alien lady or Bigfoot? Either way, aliens, right? This image boosted the life on Mars discussion, with many conspiracists saying that this image was proof. NASA explained the image is simply the paradelia phenomena. This is where humans see faces when they aren't there. Analyzing Spirit's image, if this was an alien, it'd be pretty small, according to Phil Platt of Bad Astronomy website. Anyway, NASA says it's nothing more than a Martian rock, although NASA would say that, wouldn't they? Probably because it is just a rock, right? Coming into number two, we have this screaming skull. It's pretty terrifying. This screaming skull was another of NASA's Halloween releases, this time from the year 2000. The haunting image was taken from the orbiting Chandra Observatory and is one of a cluster of galaxies known as Perseus. You can see Perseus right here in X ray vision. The Perseus cluster contains thousands upon thousands of galaxies, so we can't really truly comprehend this picture. It's just much more than a spooky picture than what looks like a skull, it's a lot going on there. While the image is already pretty spooky, it gets scarier when you realise that the bright spot in the x-ray is a black hole. Not to worry though, this scary skull cluster is 320 million light years away. Finally at number one, we have a truly iconic and somewhat infamous picture, the Viking 1 faces on Mars. This is one of the most famous NASA images out there and has been used as absolute fuel fuel to conspiracy theorists fire over the past 40 years, that was since the picture was taken in July 1976. The snap was taken by NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft and seemed to show the shadowy likeness of a human face, only this face is 2 miles long. Taken in the Cydonia region of Mars, the image was sent back to mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Lab. At the time, theorists went wild saying that it was evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars. Now the image did quite look like an Egyptian pharaoh after all. NASA explained that the image was just a Martian messer with the sunlight playing tricks. NASA later went back with the Mars orbiter camera, but people simply explained the lack of face that time by saying that it was a cloudy day and the alien detail couldn't be seen. I don't know, I'm thinking it probably was just a trick of the light. So guys that was the top 10 scary NASA pictures that should have stayed secret. I honestly once again don't think that any of them should have stayed secret, people need to know the mysteries of the universe. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. Number 9. The Forbidden City Built all the way back in 1420, around the time of the Ming Dynasty, the Forbidden City is said to be extremely haunted aside from being the largest ancient palatial structure on the planet. Located in Beijing, China, it's one of the five most important palaces in the world. It was the Imperial Palace of China from 1420 to 1912. More than 24 emperors lived here in this massive city that took 1 million workers 
workers 14 years to build. Inside the city, there's around 980 buildings and there's roughly 8,000 rooms. It's a lot of rooms to haunt, really, ghost paradise. It was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987, but come 2000, a Starbucks was built on the land. Yeah, the class is like, look at how beautiful this landmark is, let's open up a gift shop scenario. By the time 2007 came along, there was enough outrage to get officials to close said Starbucks. No more Vente lattes for you, Sarah. Sorry. Number eight, the Gates of Guinea or he gates of Guinea, as I wrote. The souls of the dead have to go somewhere, and depending on your beliefs, that somewhere could be either really beautiful and peaceful, or absolutely terrifying. In the world of voodoo, that place is an underworld called the Gates of Guinea. And here's the front door. Come on in. Awesome, take your shoes off. Located in Louisiana, this tomb, that of voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, is apparently the entrance to these deep waters, this twilight realm. And some voodoo followers try and open these gates to access the souls of the deep. Don't play Pokemon Go here. Do not. You don't want to do that. Leave the Poliwog at home, okay? He's a trap. You don't need him. Number seven, Mount Osor. Mount Osor is not the name of just one singular mountain, but instead it's an entire mountainous range. Translating to Mount Fear, Cool. This area is known as the entrance to the afterlife because it features all the geographical elements that are similar to the Japanese Buddhist descriptions of paradise and hell. So not only is this area home to eight symbolic mountain tops, but also a lake with acidic water that only one species of fish can survive in. We've got acid fish. Come on in, grab a canoe. There's also nothing but bear pits full of vipers. Not an ideal spot to take your family camping, that's for sure. Beyond this mountain range, there's even a river that's known as the border between earth and hell. This is where each and every soul must cross in order to reach the afterlife. If I'm somehow selling you on this idea and you want to take a trip up to Viper Lane, when you get there you'd find statues and offerings along the banks of this river which are intended to help the past souls find their way during this journey because it's definitely not good if the souls get lost because you don't want to even know where you end up. Getting lost in a journey to the afterlife? No man, I don't keep me on track. Ways. Thank you. Every year from July 22nd to 24th, those wanting to communicate with the dead will head to this temple located here to speak with spiritual mediums known as the Itako. So if you're feeling like spicing up your weekend, go gamble with souls of the dead. Have fun. Text us when you get there. And back. Number six, Ghost City. Fengdu is located in China and it's often referred to as the city of ghosts. For a long time, it was believed that this is where the dead stop by on their way to the afterlife. And it is here where they must pass three tests in order to get there three tests. It's a lot of tests right after you die. The first one is for the newly departed souls who must cross over the bridge of helplessness. Sounds like a good bridge, better than the bridge to Terabithia, which is meant to judge their virtue. Okay, so there's demons here who judge whether the soul is good or bad, and the ones who are good can pass while the bad ones are pushed into the water below. Imagine a demon pushing you into the water. It's worse than getting pushed in at a pool party. The ones who pass that first test go on to the ghost torturing pass, where they stand in front of the ruler of the underworld. If they pass that judgment test, then the third and final trial trial takes place at the Tianzi Palace where they will stand on a certain stone for one minute, also on one leg. For three minutes they have to do this. This is where hot yoga comes in handy. Only a good soul can do this, apparently. If you lose your balance, like I just did back there, maybe you're not wearing your minimal runners and you're wearing Tim's, or maybe you're just condemned to hell. Either one. Fengdu also has many temples and shrines which hold paintings and sculptures that represent people in the underworld. So go take a look at the oldest, awfulest selfie on the planet, that's for sure. Go take a look at some old demon art, have fun. Number five, Huska Castle. Located north of Prague in the Czech Republic, Huska Castle is supposedly built over a bottomless hole that leads directly to, you guessed it, Hell. Legend says the 13th century king Ottokar II offered a pardon to any prisoner who was willing to get lowered into this hole and live to talk about it. What a deal! The first prisoner, when they were lowered into that pit, they only lasted 30 seconds before they started screaming. Legend has it that when he was brought back up, his hair turned white and he'd aged a great amount. That's a lot of stress in 30 seconds. What he saw, however, was also pretty intense and it kind of explains it. He saw these half human, half demon type creatures flying around with scaly wings. Awesome, that's terrifying. The castle was built over the hole without a water source because it wasn't initially meant to be used by humans. Instead, it was only built for demons, should they rise from the mysterious hole. That way they can get out. God love these demons, you know? You don't want them trapped there for too long. It's a lot of noise, a lot of complaints. A lot of pollution. Number four, Nihua Island. Located in Hawaii, this island has not yet turned into a resort either. What do you know? In fact, the population of this island is a whopping 170, also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since. 
hence the small population. Thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit these islands and a ban was then put in place. So now you couldn't leave nor enter the island. Nobody got sick, which is great, but now if you want to enter this island, you need to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're rich, even if you're loaded, you can't just buy your way onto the island. So for now, we'll just zoom in on Google Earth. Bird's eye view for the win. It's a nice island. It's like a moon shape. It's good. Number three, Island Moor, Scotland. What better island to visit than one with nobody on it? It's gonna be pretty quiet. In the early 1900s, a ship was heading to the Flannan Islands, completely uninhabited, but on the ship we had Captain James Harvey and Joseph Moore. They were heading there to watch the lighthouse, but upon arrival, nobody greeted them. He blew his horn, waited, still nobody. That's when you gotta text them, be like, hey, I'm here, come down the thousands of steps, thanks. The replacement lighthouse keeper rode to shore and started walking up the steep set of stairs towards the lighthouse, but when he got there, he realized the door was unlocked and two of the three coats were missing. Upon further investigation, he saw the half-eaten food, a chair that had been tossed over, and the kitchen clock had stopped. No sign of the keepers. Hmm. When checking the lighthouse log, the previous days were odd. December 12th, the second assistant, Thomas Marshall, wrote, severe winds, the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. James was awfully quiet, and William, the third lad, was crying the whole time. Sinister vibes for sure. That's like the movie The Lighthouse in real life. That's a hard no for me, never going to this island. Next. Number two, Paviglia Island, Italy. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. When the bubonic plague arrived in 1348, the island became a quarantine colony. So if you had symptoms, you were just sent to this island to die. How horrible is that? Then again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in, and then once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard. In the 1800s, the mentally ill were sent to this island because an asylum was built. The rumor was that in the 1930s, this doctor tried crazy experiments on these patients and then he himself went crazy and then jumped from the tall bell tower. Although the tower doesn't stand anymore, his screams apparently are still heard by locals. The soil is 50% human remains as well, so if you're looking to plant some haunted aloe vera, well, there you go. And finally, number one, Fort Knox. Located in Kentucky, USA, this place really is the jackpot. The most heavily guarded place on the planet, and it's not an Egyptian pyramid. Odd. The amount of gold in here might actually be a lot more than ancient pharaohs, to be fair, so listen up. Fort Knox is home to a large amount of the United States gold reserves. Thing is, even if you work here, you're still not getting into Harry Potter's vault of treasures. Each staff member only knows part of the combination to get in, so you can't just heist your way out of lunch one day. Rumor has it, there is apparently no gold in here, but in Instead, they're studying an extraterrestrial. Another rumor is that the United States actually sold off all the gold ages ago, and they just don't want anybody to know. I weirdly vote the latter. Starting off this countdown, we have Jeffrey Bezos. In 2019, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, admitted that his nudes almost got leaked. Basically, someone got a hold of some steamy text messages and nudes that he sent to his girlfriend, and they tried to blackmail him with it. But before they could do so, he came out and admitted what he had done, and he described it in detail. One of his texts said, and I quote, I love you alive, girl. I will show you with my body and my lips and my eyes very soon. Now any person, celebrity, billionaire or not, probably doesn't want their nudes getting leaked. On top of that, Jeff was married at the time that this information came out, so it looked pretty bad on him. But he claims that he was separated from his wife before dating his new lady. Either way, Bezos didn't want us to see that side of him. And frankly, I don't want to either. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. 
Somehow, a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now, apparently, he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our seventh spot, we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway. That's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine, but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number three, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. 
Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. What do you think though? Is Boy telling the truth? Are those real photos of UFOs? Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the reenactment. This photo is extremely unsettling and for a very good reason. If, when you look at this photo, your instincts tell you that the guy in them is creepy, Ding, ding, ding. You're right. This is a photo that features the German serial killer Joachim Kroll. He is known for taking the lives of 14 people, all varying in age, and he is known for also consuming parts of their flesh. This monster was caught in 1976, and he was discovered when police found out that he had clogged the plumbing in his apartment with remains of one of his victims. How gruesome is that? This photo was taken shortly after he was caught and arrested, and what you're seeing is Kroll reenacting one of his crimes for the police. I get goosebumps just thinking about that. I couldn't imagine being there or being the police officer he's on top of. Talk about terrifying. I'm just glad that they caught him and got him off of the street. In our ninth spot, we have Naked Prince Harry. Before Harry met Meghan, he was quite the wild royal and troublemaker. Back in 2012, naked photos of Harry partying up during his trip in Las Vegas got leaked online. Prince Harry was photographed playing a game of strip billiards with his friends in his VIP suite. In the photo, we see Harry holding his junk while a naked girl stands behind him holding him. In another photo, we see the backside of Harry with his arms wrapped around the naked girl. I wonder what the queen had to say when she saw these photos. Yikes. Coming in at number eight, we have Bill Clinton. It's no surprise that a number of high up, powerful, wealthy individuals had ties with Jeffrey Epstein, including Bill Clinton. If you don't know the whole Jeffrey Epstein scandal, I suggest you look into it, but it's hella dark and disturbing. He forced a number of young individuals into doing things with him and his friends and anyone else with a lot of money. It's believed that Bill knew what Jeffrey was doing and was a part of some of it. Here is a photo of Bill with one of Jeffrey's victims, Shantae Davies. When the photo was taken, Davies was only 22 years old. She is seen rubbing Clinton's shoulders while they all wait for their plane to Africa in 2002. Apparently, it was Ghislaine Maxwell's idea for the young girl to help Bill out with his stiff back and give him a massage. Although Davy said that that's the most intimate that she got with Bill, it's still a very compromising photo of him. Having connections with Epstein in the first place tarnishes his reputation, one of the reasons why he has tried to bury this part of his past. Moving on at number seven, we have topless Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, well, seeing a guy topless is nothing scandalous, but a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook shirtless? Well, apparently Mark was really embarrassed when this photo got leaked, and his coworker that leaked it accidentally got in trouble. Let's take a look at this photo, shall we? Sorry, Mark. This photo was taken at some weird private party. The shirtless Mark is surrounded by a number of other shirtless dudes. Like I said, it's not even a bad photo, but Mark was not happy about it going around. Apparently, it was accidentally posted by Facebook's director of engineering, Andrew Bosworth. As soon as he realized it had been leaked, he took it down immediately, but the internet was too fast and screenshotted it. In our sixth spot, we have the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a secret and controversial club that meets in the California woods every year. The club consists of a number of rich men. Among the attendees are past and present presidents, government members, and business leaders. It's kept very hush-hush. What happens at this retreat thing stays there. Some say it's a cult, where they do human sacrifices among other illegal and spooky things. But since no one has yet infiltrated the club, we still don't really know what goes on there. 
but there are some photos that have gotten leaked, like pictures of a number of the men in weird cloaks surrounding a burning effigy, to pictures of some of the members seated around a huge dining table. Since this club is so controversial, I doubt the members want their pictures from the club leaked. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Mark Zuckerberg surfing. I'm pretty sure you all have seen this photo of Mark surfing in Hawaii. It became a viral photo and a meme. Why? Well, because Mark has way too much sunscreen on his face. He really packed that on all over his face and it left a very noticeable white cast. I mean, good for him for taking sun safety seriously and you know, skin cancer is no joke. But due to the fact that he became a laughing stock over the photo, I bet he didn't want anyone seeing those photos in the first place. Plus, it kind of ruins his reputation. Like, it's hard to take him seriously with that photo floating around and all the jokes associated with it. Coming in at number Four, we have Kate Middleton's topless pictures. Looks like Harry isn't the only one in the royal family to stir up some controversy. Back in 2012, Kate and William were in France vacationing when the paparazzi took some photos of the pair. In the photos, Kate was sun tanning and she was topless. The paparazzi then sold the photos to the French magazine Closer, who then published them. Obviously, she and the rest of the royal family were horrified and took legal action. In the end, the magazine company had to pay 100,000 euros in damages for publishing the photos. And two staff members were fined an additional 90,000 euros to pay to Kate Middleton and Prince William. Pretty sure every copy of this photo has been destroyed. And for Kate's sake and privacy, let's hope it stays that way. In our third spot, we have Barack Obama's party. I didn't know Barack Obama was a big partier, but these photos prove otherwise. Just this year, Barack Obama threw a huge birthday bash for his 60th birthday, but it caused quite the uproar. Why? Well, photos from that night show a room packed full of maskless people in the middle of the pandemic. Especially since Barack is a huge political figure, you would think that he would set a good example, or at least practice what he's been preaching. Either way, Obama was under fire after photos of him dancing at this epic party were posted. In our second spot, we have Prince Harry's inappropriate costume. Prince Harry was quite the royal troublemaker back in the day, making headlines with a number of scandals. Well, back in 2005, Harry was seen dressed up in a Nazi soldier uniform while attending a costume party. The costume consisted of wearing a red Nazi insignia on his left arm. Here are some of the photos from that night. Not only that, but he was photographed drinking and smoking in the outfit, which looks really freaking bad on the royal family. In the end, Prince Harry did apologize, saying, and I quote, I am very sorry if I caused any offense or embarrassment to anyone. It was a poor choice of costume, and I apologize. Let's just say that this is definitely one picture that Harry certainly wants to leave in the past. And in our number one spot today, we have Bill Gates. Bill Gates is another wealthy man who had ties with Jeffrey Epstein. Photographed here is a picture of the two at Jeffrey's Manhattan mansion in 2011. Over the years, Bill has denied his relationship with Jeffrey, but the two were friendlier than he likes to admit. Apparently, the first time they met was in 2011 after Epstein pleaded guilty to some of his crimes. But that didn't stop Bill from becoming close with him. He then proceeded to hang out with him on a number of different occasions. He went to Epstein's Manhattan town at least three times, one of those times being late at night. What were you doing there, Bill? So late, huh? He also flew on Epstein's plane a couple of times. In 2019, Gates said, and I quote, I met him. I didn't have any business relationship or friendship with him. Which clearly wasn't the truth because they met repeatedly. But anyways, it seems like Bill doesn't want anyone to see any photos that he has with Jeffrey. He doesn't want to get roped into the legal and disturbing things that Epstein was into. All right, starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the reflecting pool. This is one of the creepiest or most chilling images ever taken. It depicts a young girl in a graveyard who is looking down at her reflection in a pond. Okay, maybe a little eerie, but not exactly chilling. What really makes this photo what it is, however, is that there are seemingly two different reflections looking back up at the little girl. No one knows who this girl is, where she is, or when this photo was taken, but it is estimated to have come from somewhere around the early 1900s. This photo was analyzed and it has been said that it is unaltered or edited. Who knows how this photo was possible? Maybe there was some sort of invisible entity standing beside her that we could only see the reflection of, like a reverse vampire or something. In our number nine spot today, we have the Pioneer's Defense. 
This photo is known as the Pioneer's Defense, and man, does it ever look creepy. This photo comes from 1937, and it was taken by a Russian photographer named Viktor Bulla. This photo takes place in the Leningrad area, which is now known as St. Petersburg, which is the second largest city in Russia. The people in this photo were part of a group that was the 1930s Russian equivalent of our Boy Scouts that was called the Young Pioneers. The masks on their faces leaves a very eerie feeling, and for a fair reason. These people were doing a military preparation drill, which is the reason for the gas masks. This photo was taken during a time when the country was under the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, and the residents were constantly unsure of what was going to happen. The country was already seeing death, and people were already frightened just a few years before the start of World War II, and those in this photo felt the need to be prepared for the worst case scenario. In our number 8 spot today, we have the net test. This photo comes to us from 1958, and it is quite an interesting one. At a first glance, it looks fun, but then when you catch the expression on the person's face and look a little more into it, it really just leaves you with a ton of questions as to what exactly is going on here. It looks like a guy is going on some sort of a roller coaster ride, but what is actually happening is that a prisoner is being used to test safety nets before they were mass produced. Yeah, not the good time we thought it was. This comes from a time where capital punishment was much more widespread throughout the United States, and those waiting on death row couldn't just sit around waiting for their day to come. I think it's probably best that we made the switch to crash test dummies and that sort of thing, and this photo just remains as an eerie reminder of the less than great choices that were made in the past. In our number 7 spot today, we have a burst of joy. You might be looking at this photo wondering how this extremely joyous photo could hold any dark secrets. Well, this photo won a Pulitzer Prize, and for a good reason. This photo was captured by Slava Vetter on March 17, 1973 at the Travis Air Force Base in California. This photo shows United States Air Force Lieutenant Robert L. Sturm and his family. This was taken as he was being reunited with his family after five years of being held as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. On October 27, 1967, he was leading a flight of F-105s when he was shot down over Hanoi and held captive until March 14th, 1973. I can't imagine what this must have been like for his family, because there was a huge chance that he could have not come home at all. The looks on their faces of course clearly show that this photo is capturing an exceptionally joyful moment, it's just the story behind this moment that leaves us all with that unsettling feeling. In our number 6 spot today we have Ghost Boy. This photo is said to have been taken inside of the infamous Amityville Horror House in 1976. It is said that this creepy vintage photo is still one of the most chilling paranormal photos of all time. Yep, that's right, this photo is said to be of a ghost. After the DeFeo killing, the next owner of the house, George Lutz, swore that the house was haunted, and he called in none other than Ed and Lorraine Warren, the most famous paranormal investigators ever. On one night of the investigations, they set up an automatic camera on the second floor of the house, and this photo is said to have been caught then. Some believe that the ghostly face staring back is that of a young John Defoe who lost his life in this house. I'm not 100% sure either way, but what I am sure of is that if this is actually a photo of a ghost and not a real person, that is ridiculously creepy. In our number 5 spot today, we have a UFO report. This is less of a photo and is actually more like a PDF, but I still felt like it applied to today's list. This is a previously classified document from 1963. Although the document still has a ton of information that has been blacked out, the document is the description and report of an unidentified flying object or a UFO encounter. This is said to have taken place over the desert of Nevada, and the report was written in detail in order to have a written record of the event. This document is said to have been the authentic report from the FBI, which is exactly why some of the details have still been omitted. This might seem like less of a big deal now, as in this day and age we have declassified video footage of similar kinds of encounters, but for 1963 this was huge. As discussions of alien or extraterrestrial life is a big part of our modern day society, this document shows that these things have been on our minds for many, many years now. In our number 4 spot today we have the Apollo 1 prayer. This photo was originally taken and meant to be a sort of lighthearted prank or joke, but it would later turn out to be a chilling image. This photo shows the Apollo 1 crew jokingly praying over a miniature model of their command module. The three men in the photo are Roger Chaffee, Virgil Grissom, and Ed White, and sadly during a test launch on January 27, 1967, they all burned to death. 
To make this story even worse, prior to the test, the three of them had voiced concerns about the amount of flammable material that was on the craft. The fire was determined to have been caused by an electrical fault, and it spread extremely quickly due to combustible nylon material coupled with the high-pressure pure oxygen atmosphere in the cabin. They also were unable to be rescued or escape because the plug door hatch couldn't be opened against the internal pressure of the cabin. Before this test, it was believed that since there was no fuel on the rocket, it would be relatively safe, which is exactly why there wasn't more preparedness in case of emergency. Looking back now, this photo is certainly more mysterious than anyone at the time could have ever imagined. In our number three spot today, we have the Hilo Tsunami. This photo comes to us from April 1st, 1946. This is the day when an 8.6 magnitude earthquake hit just off of the coast of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. As we all know, earthquakes can often have after effects, and this one sent shockwaves throughout the Pacific. This led to the formation of an ocean-wide tsunami that had waves reaching up to 13 stories high. This disaster went on to strike Hilo, Hawaii, in what became one of the worst disasters in Hawaiian history. This photo somehow survived the disaster and it captures the terrifying view someone must have had in their last moments. This photo is especially chilling to view just days after the Tonga volcano eruption occurred. The earth and these naturally occurring disasters are absolutely terrifying and powerful and unpredictable. In our number two spot today, we have the shadows. As most of us know, on August 6th, 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. This was devastating to the city, and of course we can understand the implications of this. This photo shows what is called a nuclear shadow, and this is just one that could be seen throughout the city. When the bomb detonated 1,900 feet above the center of the city, the explosion caused temperatures of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit to spread through everything within 1,600 feet of it. This of course destroyed nearly every everything and everyone within a mile of it. The light and heat from the bomb was so powerful that it bleached the exposed surfaces of the city, except as seen here, where an unsuspecting person was shielding the surface with their own body. It is truly such an eerie reminder of the impact that this really had. In our number one spot today, we have the crash. This is one of those photos that was just taken in the right place at the right time, but it shows a very scary situation. A man named Jim Meads is said to have taken this photo in 1962. Story goes that a man named Bob Sowray had mentioned to Jim that he was going to fly this plane called the Lightning the following day. Jim took his kids out for a walk that next day and took his camera with him, intending to get a shot of the aircraft as Bob flew it. He wanted to get a photo of his children with the airfield in the background just as the plane was coming into land. They found on the spot, they got all set up, just waiting for the plane to return. Turns out that day Bob didn't fly the plane and instead the pilot was actually a man named George Aird who was another test pilot. So George is up in the plane and he realizes that there's trouble. Since I don't know plane language, I'm going to use this quote from fearoflanding.com, which wrote, quote, Whilst carrying out a demonstration flight, there was a fire in the aircraft's reheat zone. Unburnt fuel in the rear fuselage had been ignited by a small crack in the jet pipe and had weakened the tailplane actuator anchorage. This weakened the tailplane control system, which failed with the aircraft at 100 feet on final approach. This led to the plane pitching up aggressively as George came in to land. George lost control and he ejected in order to save himself. Luckily, since the nose had pitched up, he had just enough time. The tractor driver in this photo was then 15-year-old Mike Sutterby, who had spent that summer working on this airfield. He wasn't actually posing, he was telling Jim to move since he wasn't supposed to be there before turning to look at what was happening behind him. This is all what led to this photo being snapped and this story surviving all of these years. In the end, George was okay, aside from some minor injuries, and while Jim didn't get the photo he set out for that day, he still got quite an interesting one. Starting off this countdown, we have these space monkeys. If you're an animal lover, then this one is gonna break your heart. Before sending humans into space, animals were launched into space to see how space travel would affect them. They typically chose primates for their close relation to humans. Obviously, looking back at that, that is hella messed up. A number of monkeys sadly passed away from these tests. I mean, the first monkey sent into space died from suffocation. There's photos of him being prepped and getting ready for space, and now looking at those photos, it's just hella 
hella disturbing. So now NASA has removed all the photos they have of their test subjects. They don't want people finding out their controversial past. Of course, you can still find these photos online today, but NASA still has tried to cover it up. In our number 8 spot today we have Bikini Island. Bikini in the Marshall Islands was once inhabited by around 170 islanders until 1945 rolled around. The US President at the time, Harry Truman, ordered that the military continue to test nuclear weapons just in case they were needed in the future, since this was just shortly after the end of World War II. Unfortunately, Bikini was the place that was chosen to be the testing site, since all planes and ships traveled on routes that weren't close to the area. The residents of the island were asked to vacate, quote, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars, to which they of course oblige, under the impression that they would one day be able to move back. Test weapons were detonated on the reef itself, on the sea, in the air, and underwater, and this photo shows what was happening during just one of those tests, and it wasn't even the largest one. Although the former residents of Bikini were promised that they would one day be able to return home, the island still remains uninhabited because of the mass amounts of radiation that still exists there. In our number 8 spot today we have this huge grasshopper. This photo is allegedly undoctored, or at least that's what people once believed, but as it turns out, this photo actually comes from a line of joke postcards, thank god. Apparently it was a hilarious hit back in the day to create postcards depicting a super ungodly large kind of grasshopper. Like the kind that would make me line up first for a trip to Mars if I saw one hopping around here on Earth. Or should I say, leaping. Like for a second, just imagine. With how high regular tiny grasshoppers can jump, this thing would be jumping into the clouds for sure. Also like, what would it eat? No thank you to large bugs, especially ones that can jump. I'm just so glad that this one turned out to be fake. Even though it's fake, I wish this was still one that they withheld from the public. And our number 7 spot today we have these prohibition barrels. The prohibition was the outlaw of the consumption of alcohol, which was done with a ban being placed on the production, importation, transportation, and sale of alcohol by the US government from 1920 to 1933. This ban certainly did not stop people from producing or consuming alcohol, it was just done in sneakier ways. The black market for alcohol was booming as people began to drink redistilled industrial alcohol instead. This photo shows how big the black market industry for alcohol was, as it shows a massive stack of liquor barrels that were collected by the authorities in 1924 about to be set ablaze. The people look so tiny standing next to this insane amount of alcohol. While the prohibition is generally regarded as a failure, the biggest failure it caused was the unintended organized crime it put into life in America. In our number 6 spot today we have this neighborhood nuclear test. This photo shows a mother and her young son looking out the window and witnessing a nuclear test explosion from the comfort of their own home in 1953. Like. What? Imagine seeing that from your window now in 2021. People would be going wild! Of course any kind of nuclear test should be done as far away from where people live as possible. I know it's not like the test was being done in their front yard or anything, but still, I certainly wouldn't be comfortable with them testing a nuclear bomb anywhere near the place I live. This photo was of course taken before the effects of nuclear radiation from these kind of explosions were publicly understood. Actually, people have suggested that the public knowledge of these kinds of side effects were suppressed during this time in order to avoid controversy about them testing these kinds of weapons in your neighborhood. While that would of course be something insane to witness firsthand, thankfully the now widely known health risks associated with this sort of thing has caused this to not be a common occurrence. In our number 5 spot today we have the Boston Marathon. This photo comes to us from 1967 and it depicts the struggles that Catherine Switzer went through in order to be the first female to finish the Boston Marathon. This photo shows race organizers as well as other participants participants trying to stop her from running the marathon that she trained for and was more than capable of completing. She has written a book that explains in great detail all the things she went through that day and how the critiques and opinions about a woman running the race started even before she had registered to run. People in our history like Catherine are incredibly important, as well as photos like these, because they show when people were literally trying to drag her down, she just kept on running. In our number 4 spot today we have a traffic jam. On Sunday, September 3rd, 1967, Sweden changed from driving on the left hand side of the road to driving on the right hand side of the road. Why? 
Well, I'm not exactly sure considering people downvoted the idea before it was implemented and it cost a ton of money to make the switch. Not to mention it's also super confusing for basically everyone and when we're talking about driving, the simpler the better. Traffic lights had to be reversed, road signs changed, intersections redesigned, lines on the roads repainted, buses modified and bus stops moved. What happened when the change was implemented? Well, that's what this photo will show you. Absolute chaos. However, after the initial shock, things did start to get better as because drivers were much more cautious in the time following the switch, the number of traffic accidents actually dropped for a little while before inevitably rising again. Was the switch worth it? Well, no one is sure about that, but what are they gonna do? Change it back. In our number three spot today, we have the three Jacksons. On August 21st, 1934, three fearless acrobats known as the three Jacksons, Charlie Smith, Jewel Waddock, and Jimmy Kerrigan, all performed a routine on the edge of the Empire State Building, which is when this photo was captured. It is said that these three toured as an acrobatic trio, and this stunt the photo captured was done at 1,245 feet. According to officials from the Empire State Building, it is said that this was the first time the stunt was attempted, and to this day, it has never been done again, which makes a lot of sense. While this photo is absolutely incredible and is such a testament not only to the trust they shared, but also their abilities as acrobats, I don't know who in their right mind would try to recreate this. We already have one, and I think we can just all be happy with that. In our number two spot today, we have the man who fell from space. Vladimir Komarov was a cosmonaut, Soviet test pilot, and aerospace engineer. He was one of the most highly experienced and qualified people, which is exactly why he was chosen for some of the very first space missions. He became the first Soviet cosmonaut to fly into space twice. Unfortunately, however, on one of these missions, things went seriously awry. A parachute failure caused his capsule to crash into the ground after re-entry on the 24th of April in 1967. He literally fell from space, and regardless of if you know anything about space and re-entry, that would have been absolutely terrifying and awful. He of course didn't make it, but the entire process left his remains almost unrecognizable. This photo shows his colleagues looking onto his remains before he was laid to rest. The contributions of people like Vladimir have allowed us to go further into space and understand more than we ever could have imagined. In our number one spot today, we have the gadget. This photo shows the first ever atomic bomb and it comes to us from 1945. Called the gadget, this bomb was an implosion plutonium device that was detonated in the Trinity test in 1945. This photo shows someone sitting next to it, so casually, like it's a PB&J sandwich and not this world changing device. The Trinity test was the very first time a nuclear weapon was detonated and the gadget was actually the same design as the bomb that was later detonated over Nagasaki, Japan on August 9th, 1945. There's such an eerie nature about this photo and the seemingly casual behavior of the man next to it. Did he know what this was about to unleash? Perhaps but maybe not. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Tsar Bomb. This is a photo that was taken on October 30th, 1961. It was quite the Halloween spooky fright that year as this is said to be the largest and most powerful nuclear weapon ever created and tested. The hydrogen aerial bomb was developed in the Soviet Union by a group of nuclear physicists that were under the leadership of Igor Kurchatov. The bomb was dropped by parachute and was detonated autonomously. While this test was meant to be a secret, it turned out to be less than well kept as it was obviously a huge explosion that was detected by United States intelligence agencies. A secret US recon aircraft called Speedlight Alpha was there monitoring the explosion and it got so close that it had its anti-radiation paint absolutely scorched off. The photo clearly shows the bomb as it exploded and it is said that this bomb was 5,000 times stronger than the ones that were dropped on Japan during World War II. That's not to say that those ones weren't strong because they were absolutely devastating, it's just an example to show how large this one really was. In our ninth spot, we have the aliens. It seems like NASA and Area 51 might be hiding aliens. What's new? The photo I'm about to share with you is a leaked photo of aliens hidden in Area 51. The photo was taken in the 1980s and years later someone leaked it online. I don't know about you, but that looks exactly like a space alien to me and it looks like they're running some sort of tests on them or something. Now, of course, people think that this photo is fake. Go ahead, believe whatever. Just know that there are tons of individuals that believe it to be real. Plus, it's never been debunked. Take what you want for that. <laughs> Coming in at number eight, we have the second sun. According to astronomer Paul Cox, there is a second sun in our solar system, and NASA is keeping it a secret. Why would they do that? 
I don't know, because they can. So Paul discovered this after using his telescope to stare at the planets. He actually live streamed him doing this, and while doing so, he pointed to a black dot, which was Mercury. He said that this was the location of the second sun. He said, and I quote, you may be asking yourself, what is that large round thing to the right of the sun? Well, that's our second sun. I don't know if you knew that we had a second sun, but there it is. It is normally hidden from view. NASA and other organizations usually hide that stuff away from us. Now, I don't know why NASA would hide this from us, but apparently they are, and there's a second sun out there. In our seventh spot, we have the SpaceX explosion. Back in 2020, a NASA worker leaked video and photographic evidence of a SpaceX explosion. NASA was furious when they found out and sent out a memo to all workers saying that they would be fired if they publicly share photos and videos from the Space Center again. And then someone leaked that memo. Anyways, NASA was all like, nah, nothing happened, nothing exploded. Then the video surfaced and they're like, oh snap, we're caught. It started when people saw smoke coming over the space coast and were like, what's going on over there? And NASA failed to properly explain. But like I said, things got leaked and they were exposed. In our sixth spot, we have Planet X. So astronomer Paul Cox says that NASA has proof of Planet X. It's a broken planet that is behind the sun that he believes will eventually crash into Earth and wipe out all of humanity. But obviously, NASA doesn't want anyone to know this, which is why they're hiding it from all of us. And I genuinely hope that this isn't true, and that Paul's lying, and that he knows nothing, because that's terrifying. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the trees on Mars. A weird shot taken of Mars revealed what looked like dark trees rising from the surface. Like it straight up looks like trees and shrubs are growing there, which we know isn't possible. So then, what is it? Well, NASA says that it's just an optical illusion and it's not actually trees. But other people think that NASA is trying to already grow things on Mars or that this is part of an alien structure. Who knows? But NASA's being hella sketchy with this photo. In our fourth spot, we have the lady on Mars. In 2007, people went nuts when the Spirit rover snapped this eerie photo on the planet. It literally looks like a human figure perched on a rock. Now NASA immediately denied this and said that, you know, it's just a rock. But that didn't stop UFO enthusiasts. They believe that this rock is actually a female figure made by aliens, or that it is an alien. Like, look at that. How can that be a rock? Like, there's fully arms and clothing on it. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. Nice try, NASA. Better luck next time. That's a woman. In our third spot, we have the space guests. A couple of years ago, a Russian cosmonaut aboard the International Space Station noticed three unusual lights fly by their craft. Thankfully, they got it on film. The cosmonaut believes that what he saw and captured was indeed a UFO flying by. He said, and I quote, five objects appear flying alongside with the same distance. What do you think those are? Meteors, satellites, or dot dot dot? The lights are in a straight line and apparently were hanging around that area for almost a minute before disappearing. He has no explanation for it besides it being a UFO spacecraft. In our second spot, we have the alien statue. In 2019, NASA accidentally leaked some photos that we shouldn't have been able to see. So they released photos taken by their Mars robot opportunity. In one of the shots, someone pointed out that there appears to be a dark object near one of Mars's craters. It looks like this object has a long arm, a bulky chest, and two leg fragments. One person said, and I quote, it looks like an actual statue. There seems to be so many anomalies stones on Mars that at some point one must admit that sometimes a rock is an ancient artifact. Whereas others believe that this is an alien's corpse that is decomposing. But what do you think? It certainly looks like an alien to me. And in our number one spot today we have the alien city. So there's a theory out there that aliens do actually live on the moon. However, they inhabit the dark side of the moon, aka the side of the moon facing away from us that we can't see. Well, a man named Scott Waring found physical evidence to prove this. He obtained satellite images from the dark side of the moon and saw that the moon has structures that cast shadows. Take a look for yourself. If you zoom into the photos, you can see a bunch of weird objects on the moon's surface. That's not the normal texture of the moon. Those
those look like structures. So he believes that aliens are for sure on the moon and that NASA has been covering it up for years. Not only that, but the images that NASA chose to share with the public had been altered so that the objects were edited out. And then NASA added fake craters in that location. Why would they do that, huh? That's suspicious. Yeah, that's hella sus. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the visitor. This one comes from a Reddit user called Fan and Depressed. They posted this picture with the caption, got a notification from my smart home app in the middle of the night saying, your doorbell detected a visitor. That's all he put and that's all that was needed. He posted it to the creepy subreddit where it has gained over 34,000 upvotes. One of the top comments said, why are you doing this? Because you were home. That's a quote from the movie Strangers, where some twisted home invaders give their reason for terrorizing a woman in her home. It's a great movie and yeah, it does remind me of this too. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to see this on your phone app in the middle of the night? There was no follow up story to this, I just hope they were alright. In our number 9 spot today we have the radio telescope. This is a photo of what was once a secret but is now considered a huge celebratory work. This photo was taken during the construction of China's 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope. This huge dish was constructed in a natural depression in the landscape and is the world's largest filled aperture radio telescope. The design is absolutely novel, which is why, while the telescope was first proposed in 1994, construction didn't start until 2011. It first observed light in 2016, and after years of testing, it was declared fully operational in January of 2020. If you're interested in space, you'll know exactly why this is such a fascinating and exciting creation. This radio telescope can give us beautifully sensitive observations that could help in the hunt for gravitational waves and give us more information of the mysterious and fleeting blasts of radiation that are known as fast radio bursts. Every step in the world of space exploration could have some wild implications on our world, and it's all very cool. In our number 8 spot today we have the Pentagon crash. We have all heard about the devastating September 11th, 2001 attacks, but some of you might not know that on that day there were actually a few separate coordinated attacks, all a part of the same plan, and one of those attacks was on the Pentagon. Pentagon. This photo was previously classified but eventually was released by the US government and it shows the absolute devastation that was done by the commercial plane that crashed into the Pentagon building. The plane was able to tear through all five rings that existed in the building. All of the people on board the plane that day as well as 125 people that were in the building at the time passed away in this horrible event. For obvious reasons, the initial photos of the Pentagon damage were withheld from the public or from circulating in the media, but now that they have been released, it just shows us all another side to that horrible, terrifying day. In our number 7 spot today we have Operation High Jump. This photo was taken in the late 1940s during Operation High Jump. This was a United States Navy operation that was aimed to establish the Antarctic research base Little America 4. It is said that the goals of this mission were to train personnel and test equipment in frigid conditions, determine the feasibility of establishing and utilizing bases in the Antarctic as well as scoping out possible base sites, examining and amplifying the existing stores of knowledge of several different kinds of conditions in the area, such as geological, geographical, and meteorological, and this final one, which was initially denied, but apparently also to consolidate and extend the United States sovereignty over the largest practical area of the Antarctic content. This final one was publicly denied for quite some time. This photo shows one of the ships belonging to the United States Navy stuck between two of the Arctic's icebergs. In our number 6 spot today we have a UFO report. This photo is of a previously classified document from 1963. Although the document still has a lot of information that has been blacked out, the document is the description and report of an unidentified flying object or UFO encounter. This is said to have taken place over the desert of Nevada and the report was written in detail in order to have a written record of this event. The document is said to be the authentic report from the FBI which is exactly why some of the details have been omitted. This might seem like less of a big deal now as in this day and age we have declassified video footage of similar kinds of encounters, but for 1963 this was huge. As discussions of alien or extraterrestrial life is a big part of our modern society, this document shows that that these things have been on our minds for many, many years now. In our number 5 spot today we have a flying saucer. Speaking of aliens and UFOs, one place on earth that has a multitude of alien stories coming from it is of course none other than Area 51. This site is no stranger to conspiracy theories and this declassified photo taken at the location might give us a little insight into how these theories began. 
This photo clearly shows a strange disc-like object next to some more regular looking planes. And I mean, to be fair, if we saw that disc flying through the air, it does resemble the flying saucer type UFO that used to be talked about in the mainstream as the preferred alien mode of transportation. As it turns out, this photo is actually of an experimental aircraft that was made by the United States Air Force, of course, which is why the letters USAF can be seen on the craft. This was one of the few aircrafts created for the purpose of trying out various air carriers. Similar ones to this were also created by the government and were actually seen flying over the southwest region of the United States, which surely only contributed to the UFO discussions. In our number four spot today, we have the Soviet spacecraft. This photo shows the construction of the Soviet Buran spacecraft. Apparently, this was the spacecraft that was built in response to the news spilled by Richard Nixon in 1972 that the United States was to build its own brand new spacecraft, which was to be designed by NASA. The Buran was the first space plane to be produced as part of the Soviet Russian Buran program, and in 1988, it actually went on to complete an unmanned space flight that was extremely successful. Unfortunately, this craft met its demise in 2002 when the storage hangar it was located in collapsed. The Buran program was suspended prior to this collapse because of a lack of funds and the political situation in the Soviet Union. The collapse was because of structural failure that was caused by poor maintenance, and unfortunately the spacecraft wasn't the only casualty. In far worse news, eight workers also lost their lives that day. In our number three spot today, we have Area 51 Part 2. This is another photo that was taken from Area 51 and it shows another kind of spacecraft that is likely the source of many UFO stories. At this point, Area 51 will likely always be a place that is filled with rumors of our wildest imaginations, even if they were to one day start offering tours of the facility. Rumors span from aliens to mermaids and so much more, and it is believed that the US government is intentionally keeping it all a secret from us. Since the infamous Roswell incident that happened in 1947, the Nevada Air Force Base is going to be the source of many a mystery. While I don't know the exact details of what is going on in this photo, this is just another small insight into what goes on within the mysterious walls of Area 51. In our number two spot today, we have this nuclear waste facility. For another Nevada mystery, high up in the mountains of Yucca, there is a super top secret location that has details which are not to be released to the public. I guess that was probably implied when I said the word secret. The reason this facility is so secret is because it is said to hold all of America's nuclear waste. This waste repository was designated by the Nuclear Policy Act amendments of 1987, and basically it is a deep geological repository storage facility. While the project was approved in 2002 by the 107th United States Congress, as of April 14th, 2011, federal funding for the site came to an end. This site was the focus of many fights as there were tons of people who were extremely opposed to it. The closure of the site has left the United States government and American nuclear power plants without any designated long-term storage facility. This photo is said to have come from the site of the nuclear waste storage facility. In our number one spot today, we have the experiment. This photo is an example of how, for a long time, the United States has done its best to stay on top of all of the latest kinds of technology and the most cutting edge equipment. This photo is showing some kind of test that was being done on a prototype ejection seat. While this was once a classified photo, of course back when this was new technology, the Central Intelligence Agency has since released the photos in order to provide information on the technology that was being created during what now seems like the old in days of science. These times truly are not far off at all and it's incredible to see how far we've come in so little time. This photo serves as a super cool reminder of just how technologically advanced we really are, although sometimes we may take that for granted. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot today, we have the Rothschild Surrealist Ball. The Rothschild family is one of the wealthiest and most powerful families there has ever been, and you know with money comes power, and because of that, there have for many years been rumors swirling about just how powerful and influential they really are. That is why in 1972, when they threw what was called a Surrealist Ball, people began to speculate what kind of things may have taken place at this elaborate soiree. These photos could potentially be very innocent, but there's just 
something about these elaborate masks coupled with the theories about what this family is really up to that just makes it feel very eerie. This party is one of the most legendary there has ever been and whether or not they really are involved in shady dealings, that is still impressive. It's like the project X of the rich and fancy. I'll take pools and kegs of beer over this weird mask party any day. Next up at number 9 now we have the mummified captain. This is the disturbing story of Manfred Fritz Bajorat, a German man who was found in his boat by two fishermen off the coast of the Philippines. He was dead. His corpse has been preserved by dry ocean winds, hot temperatures and a salty sea air. It could not be determined how long he had been dead for but he hadn't been seen by anyone for 7 years. He'd actually been sailing the world on his yacht for the past 20 years. It's thought that from the way he was sitting, death was unexpected, perhaps from a heart attack. The police said there was no evidence of a second person aboard and no weapon was found on board the yacht. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Home. This is a 1948 picture of a girl who grew up in a Nazi concentration camp. Now She was asked to draw what home was and this is what she drew. The photograph was taken by David Seymour in a home for emotionally disturbed children located in Warsaw. Not much is known about the girl other than her name, Teresa. The swirling lines are a stark reminder of horrors of the Holocaust. More than one and a half million Jewish children were killed in the Holocaust. Those that survived often ended up like Teresa, lost shocked and unable to grasp a simple concept like home. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Obsession. George Karl Tanzler was a radiology technician from Germany. He moved to Florida where he married Maria de Hoyos, a local Cuban American woman. She died of tuberculosis 5 years later despite his best efforts to save her. He wouldn't accept her death though. After her funeral, George dug up Maria's body and took her to his home. He attempted to preserve her. This is the picture of his efforts. He attached her bones together with wire and coat hangers and fitted her face with glass eyes. He replaced her skin with silk cloth soaked in wax. He gave her a wig and filled her insides with rags. He covered her in jewellery and the smell was masked with copious amounts of perfume. The body was eventually discovered by authorities a full 9 years after he first removed her from her resting place. Next up at number 6 now we have the catacombs. This is a very disturbing picture. Please look away now if you're sensitive to death and all that kind of thing. This is the story of Masha, a Ukrainian woman who went out with a large group of friends to celebrate New Year's Eve in 2005. It was a foggy night with temperatures around freezing. The group stumbled into the Odessa Catacombs, an ancient tunnel and cave system that spans for over 1,500 miles. Somehow, Masha became separated from her group and got lost in the dark. She seems to have wandered for days with no food or water before slipping into a coma and then death. Her body wasn't discovered for months and until this picture was taken by some local boys who found her. Still, she wasn't retrieved by authorities for a further two years. When a story was shared on Reddit, people tried to imagine how terrifying it must be to be lost in the dark like that, pitch black darkness, unable to see any difference between your eyes being closed and open and totally alone. Moving on to number 5 now, we have shell shocked. In World War 1, there were hundreds of thousands of soldiers who got shell shock, a type of PTSD brought on from the endless bombardment they had to endure. Tens of thousands of soldiers were treated for the disorder. Victims were said to have a thousand yard stare, looking into the distance as their mind went blank. Here is a famous picture from a soldier during the Battle of the Somme, a battle which killed 3 million men. This man appears to be suffering from shell shock. He has a crazed look in his eyes that is often associated with those who had shell shock. It's an image that has become increasingly associated with war, especially the hell that was World War 1. Next up at number 4 now we have the subway. In 2012, the New York Post ran a story with this picture. It was of Ki Suk Han, a 58 year old man who was pushed onto the tracks by a stranger. He was fatally struck by a train seconds later. The suspect was 30 year old Naeem Davis who confessed to pushing the innocent man onto the tracks. The picture shocked New Yorkers and people around the world. Why was someone taking a picture instead of trying to help? Should the New York Post even have ran that story and published that picture? What do you guys think? Next up at number 3 now we have Madame Violet. This is a picture of of Violet Spears, otherwise known as Madame Violet. She was the leader of a group of real life vampires in Edinburgh in the late 19th century. They were called The Hive. They became known as lovely but dangerous partiers, seducing men and women with drugs and alcohol and then making them donate their blood to them, so to speak. Some of the victims even joined The Hive and she became their leader too. In 1882 and 1884, she was apparently voted the scariest woman in England, even though she never left Scotland. That's how scary she is. She scared 
outside another country she didn't even live in. Moving on to number two now, we have the vulture and the little girl. On March 26, 1993, the New York Times shared a picture known as Struggling Girl. It showed a famine stricken boy, initially believed to be a girl who had collapsed from malnutrition during a famine in South Sudan. In the background, a vulture waits patiently. These birds have a keen sense of death, and this one has its eyes on the boy. The picture shocked the world. The photographer, Kevin Carter, was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his photography. He actually killed himself just four months later. The reasons are largely unknown, but many people speculate that pictures like this can drive anyone down a dark path. And finally, number one now, we have the Hiroshima shadows. When the US dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan's Hiroshima, over 100,000 people were killed. Some of them who were close enough were literally vaporized into thin air. The intense heat of the explosion caused what's now called nuclear shadows. The blast forever change services because of the UV radiation. Services that were blocked by people look different to its surroundings, leaving a sort of permanent shadow of the person who was vaporized. This is one of the most striking images for me. What appears to be an old person stood at the bottom of the steps. You can even see the cane in their hand. It's a shocking reminder of how destructive weapons of war have become, how quickly life can be snuffed out in an instant, leaving only a shadow behind. Coming into number 10, we have up close and personal with Area 51. In September 2017, 17 YouTube channel UFO seekers did just that. They sought UFOs. What did they find? Well, you will see. Tim Lee and Tracy Doyle hiked up Tikaboo Peak, a 1.4 mile high mountain, 25 miles opposite the military base. The duo used telescopic lenses to get the clearest possible photos of the secret base ever taken from outside by just a civilian. Although you can't see little aliens running around or anything, there are plenty of vehicles to be seen, plus an expansive building and water tanks. Hours. It isn't too scary, but the video is super interesting how they got there and everything, and actually it's quite tense. Had they been caught by authorities taking long lens images, then they really could have been in trouble. The video is 18 minutes long, but here is a clip of the YouTubers finding the base. The video has had over 2.4 million views. Perhaps the Kyles are watching it to swat up for their attack planned on the 20th of September. Kyles. Number nine. Winona Ryder. Back in December 2001, Winona Ryder was doing a little Christmas shopping at a Beverly Hills Saks Fifth Avenue, only she wasn't using her Beetlejuice paycheck at the counter, instead she stole thousands of dollars worth of goods. She had accessories, a handbag, clothes, her arms were literally full of good stuff. She was then sent to the slammer for a whole, you know, four hours, then of course she was released on a $20,000 bail. She was charged with felony grand theft, but she was also charged with possession of pharmaceutical drugs without a prescription. That is a no no in Beetlejuice land. She had antidepressants on her while she was being arrested. She wasn't intoxicated or anything. She was actually well mannered. Even Lieutenant Gary Gilman of the Beverly Hills Police Department said she was a, and I quote, true lady. That's how you, that's a true lady. That's what you gotta do. Just steal a bunch of sh and be in Beetlejuice. Security footage showed the actress cutting tags off in the store, and when she left, she was immediately detained. It's widely known at this point that Winona isn't a horrible person by any means. She was going through stuff at the time, but this photo, no matter the context, it just looks bad. Honestly, I think it's the floppy hat. She just looks like she's doing a diamond heist. I don't know. In our number eight spot today, we have John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy is known for a multitude of reasons, but discussions about his health often don't take place. This photo shows just an inch of the struggle Kennedy went through every day, as it is said he suffered from some sort of painful intestinal problems. Apparently things were so bad that for a while it was thought his illness might have been terminal. Aside from the intestinal issues, he also suffered from extreme back pain that stemmed from spinal problems he had as a child. Apparently these back problems were so bad that they almost kept him from service in World War II. After his election, although the world saw him as a young, handsome president, he really was struggling with his health behind the scenes and it can definitely be seen in this photo. However, it is said that whenever anyone and asked him how he was feeling. His only response was that he was in, quote, excellent shape. Number seven, Stalin Photoshop. Deep fakes are getting out of control. Modern technology is really making it hard to tell what's real and what's not. I thought I knew what was up. Apparently my eyes fool me more often than not. Photoshop is also an essential now for pretty much any project, including your selfie. You gotta touch it up a little bit, get rid of those blemishes. Well, back in 1939, a photo of Stalin was published and he looks great. Some would say too good. Well, he retouched a 1924 photo and then used that as his headshot when he became a leader later on. Even if you get 
a photo was stolen, you might not be there in the future. Yeah, there's a chance you would be digitally removed even back in the day. Like Nikolai Yetov, for example. The leader of the NKVD was in a photo with Stalin. He was. But around 1937, Nikolai was responsible for orders that had over 1 million people arrested. And to make matters worse, half of them were executed for crimes against the state. So it wasn't ideal to be in a photo with Nikolai. He was denounced, imprisoned, and he died later on in 1940. So Stalin had him erased and replaced digitally. Look at that. If you look close, you can actually see Lizard getting punched by an invisible Spider-Man in the background. Yeah, we caught it. The man was ahead of his time. Even today, we're replacing actors in movies with different actors, and you wouldn't even know. In our number six spot today, we have the secret Pacific Ocean Air Base. Also known as the Johnson Atoll, this secret air base is located right smack dab in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Said to be the location of numerous nuclear tests, the United States government was sure to release little to no details surrounding this location or what exactly goes on there. How comforting. Something about nuclear and secret seems ominous. Aside from being a little secret base, this place is also the home to a thriving community of nesting seabirds, and since it's literally in the middle of the ocean, the marine life surrounding it is significantly diverse. This has all led to there being teams that do environmental monitoring and maintenance to protect the wildlife. Like how weird is it that this is the place they use to store and dispose of Agent Orange, but they're also like, we gotta protect the birds. I mean, I'm glad they're protecting the birds, I just think it's ironic. To get into this place, you either need to be a part of the United States Air Force or have a special use permit from the US Fish and Wildlife Service. So random. Number five, a bunny's tail. Back in 1963, the Playboy Club in New York was one of Hugh Hefner's greatest accomplishments at the time. The club was, of course, the talk of the town until Gloria Steinem came in. Gloria was a feminist writer. She created Miss Magazine back in 1972. She's a very big lady, I don't know what I was about to say. She's a big deal, but her career began much earlier around the 60s. See, she got a job as one of these Playboy bunnies and worked at the club undercover. How badass is that? She was secretly taking note of how this key holders only establishment was operating. And it was pretty sketchy. I mean, use your imagination. It was horrible towards women. They're wearing high heels while running drinks. The staff were these young, young women, the bunnies. They had to wear these black bodysuits, the puffy white tails, the whole getup. And at age 28, Gloria worked undercover there for three weeks. The piece she released after, appropriately titled A Bunny's Tail, got so much attention that it kickstarted her freelance career and made her a feminist icon. This photo of Gloria undercover shows you the comfortable work outfits she had to wear. I sure hope she had her non-slips on. It's a really dark establishment too. Say corner a lot. In a collection of her writings, Gloria reflects on the undercover piece, saying, my expose of working in a Playboy club has outlived all the Playboy clubs, both here and abroad. That was before Hefner passed away in 2017. She didn't mean to, you know, take a jab at him, but she also did outlive Hugh Hefner. I'll say it. She doesn't have to take the smoke on this style. I connected the dots for you. In our number four, spot today we have Cher. Cher is often referred to as the goddess of pop and for good reason. She is an absolute legend and an icon. She has never been afraid to push the limits or go outside of the box. So when we came across this photo, we were both surprised and not so surprised at the same time. This little photo comes to us from 1959 when Cher was just 13 years old. As it turns out, Cher was driving when she wasn't supposed to. In a 2013 appearance on The Tonight Show, she explained that a friend of hers had asked her to watch his car while he ran inside to do something. Cher moved the car a couple of times to get out of the way of other people, but then decided that he was simply just taking too long and decided to drive herself over to the drive-in theater. Luckily, everyone was okay, and once the police brought her to the station, they simply just called her mom to come and pick her up. Apparently, she didn't even know she was being arrested at the time, which I totally think you can tell by her expression in the mugshot. Number three, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Of course, we all remember this one. At one point, we heard about it, be it on LimeWire in the middle of your song, this would randomly play. Bill Clinton talking about not having sexual relations with that woman. Back when we had to download music, that was a classic. So loud, so out of nowhere and so loud. But this was a huge presidential scandal, you know, back when they weren't every other week. It was 1998, Clinton White House intern Monica Lewinsky was 22 years old and they had a sexual relationship from 1995 to 1997. They definitely did. But Lewinsky said she hooked up with Bill nine different times at the White House. Apparently, according to your schedule, Hillary Clinton was at the White House for at least seven of those visits. Whenever I see this photo, I wish I was alive to see this unfold in real time. I mean, I was alive, but I was three. You know what I mean? I wasn't like 
Damn, that's crazy. In our number two spot today, we have an A12 spy plane. This photo is one that shows the remnants of a crashed A12 spy plane from 1963, as well as the subsequent cleanup and rescue mission. This crash happened during a test flight when pilot Ken Collins was testing the plane's subsonic engines at a low altitude. Ken was then flying under his Area 51 code name, which was Ken Colmar, which is just the coolest thing. I really want a secret agent code name. Anyway, at 25,000 feet, the plane basically inverted and somehow landed its upside down. So now Ken is flying upside down and he knew he wasn't going to be able to recover so he ejected himself. In the end Ken was okay but the same obviously couldn't be said for the plane. To make this cool story even cooler, apparently US officials later made Ken undergo hypnosis and treatments of sodium pentothal which is thought to be like a truth serum in order to be sure he relayed the details of the incident as fully and as truthfully as possible. That's serious business. Usually I just ask someone a couple times and then go with whatever they tell me. And finally, number one, Charlie Chaplin and Co. I'm wearing a hat now and a sweater. I'll never tell you why. When we think of Chaplin, we often think of the mustache, the physical comedy, the hat, the fact that he lost a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest, yada, yada, yada. We know the rest. We remember the performances that he would give us for the most part. It's how you want to be remembered as an artist, ideally. Now, when it comes to Chaplin, though, those old timey photos of the comedic genius also include his number of different wives, a lot of them being much, much younger. The first two being years old when they were married, right? His first marriage was with Mildred Harris in 1918. He was 29, she was 15. Odd, that marriage only lasted two years, and then he married Lita Gray in 1924. She was also 16. Odd again, that marriage ended with a messy 50-page divorce where it was revealed Chaplin was pretty in all of his manners as a husband. Still the biggest film star, regardless of how he treated co-stars and also ex-wives, he went on to marry Paulette Goddard nine years later, who was 22. A bit better, but here's the crappy part. She said she was 16 when they met, so a year older than his ex-wives. And he was still pursuing her after she said that, so odd again. He moved into her mansion shortly after they began talking. Seven years later, that relationship ended too, and thus began his new relationship with Una O'Neill. Chaplin in his 50s and Una at age 18. He was the same age as her father. Makes the mustache a little less fun now, doesn't it? They both remained together until Chaplin's passing in 1977. We're talking about Pete Davidson when really we should be talking about Charlie Chaplin still. Kicking off the list at number 10, William Thomas Stead. Born in 1849, William Thomas Stead was the son of Congregationalist minister and at the age of 22, he was appointed as editor of the Northern Echo, a regional newspaper in Darlington. This British medium, Richard Borsonall, featured a photo of W.T. Stead and a spirit or a demon, one of the two, both pretty terrifying. While William was investigating a spiritual case, he took this photo with what's supposed to be the spirit of Pete Botha. Now, the reason many believe that maybe the spirit is evil is that Stead later on died in the Titanic. He boarded the ship to take part in a peace congress at Carnegie Hall, and survivors mentioned William Thomas Stead a few times. Apparently at dinner, he was chatting his way throughout the entire 11 course meal, recounting exciting spooky times in his life, even mentioning a cursed mummy that he encountered at the the British Museum once. That's a little odd for table talk. He even gave his life jacket to another passenger that night too. Stead would often claim that he would one day pass due to hanging or to drowning. And right before he was to be awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize, he passed away due to the latter. Was he cursed? I believe so, to be honest with you. you Coming in at number nine, we have even closer, if you can imagine it. This is one of the closest ever images taken of Area 51. It was taken from a light aircraft and is in the Nevada Aerospace Hall of Fame right now. Here we can see a much closer overview of the whole compound, something that would have been classified just a few years ago. Coming into number eight, we have the airstrip. In 2013, some documents about Area 51 were declassified, although many criticized the response to the Freedom of Information request to having been underwhelming, featuring heavily redacted information. Nonetheless, in 2016, the US did permit Google Earth to photograph the area, which had previously been a no-fly zone. Now you too can view the facility from a bird's eye view. You can check it out and see what's going on, although from very high in the sky. From browsing Google around 12 miles north of Area 51, there seems to be an unexplained airstrip coming in at around one mile long. There is also a visible cluster of buildings at the end of the strip, which is kind of baffling. We've got no idea what's being tested here. According to intel from the website Life Science, though, it is thought that the space could be used to test reconnaissance drones. Coming in to number 7, we have the Paradise Trailers. Area 51 used to be colloquially known as Paradise Ranch in order to make it sound more appealing to 
with families of workers. I suppose it's a lot to ask a person to relocate to the middle of the desert, so why not rebrand the place Paradise and make it sound more appealing? An image has been released of the Paradise era showing a number of trailers at the facility. Is this where families lived or was it home to aliens? It's kind of cool seeing how things used to be in its heyday, assuming its heyday is over. We just don't know. Alright, coming into number six, this is the big one. It is the alien autopsy. The alien autopsy was reportedly shot in Area 51 and depicts the aliens that were transported to the facility from Roswell after the 1947 crash. The crash was said to have been of a flying disc UFO and was said to have contained wounded aliens. The video was released in 1995 by Ray Santilli, who said that the footage had been supplied to him by a former military camera technician who wanted to remain anonymous. Obviously, let's have a little look at the footage, shall we? Um, I mean, that is a dead alien right there, right? But like, is it? The footage absolutely blew up in 1995, but people were quick to call it a fraud. In the end, Santilli claimed that yeah, only part of the footage was real. He said that only a few frames from the original footage were there, but they were there. He also said the rest had been replicated and was a reconstruction of footage he had had, but was damaged. Sounds likely. Coming into number five, we have the Roswell Rescue. Footage claiming to be from the Roswell fallout surfaced on the internet in 2015 and alleges to show agents holding a corpses and taking them on a stretcher. Have a little look. I don't know, it kind of looks a bit sketchy, right? Can we get another look? Hmm, I guess it was 1947, so we can't expect too much film wise, but I'm not sure this is quite the smoking gun we were looking for. The video has had around 160,000 views on YouTube, but the like to dislike ratio suggests that some people may not be too convinced as to its authenticity. One of my favourite comments on the video comes from Mr. Saturday Night Special, who wrote, This has to be real. Everyone knows when you travel across the universe, you don't wear clothes. Just ask Chewbacca. He'll tell you. You're right. You know what? Are we the only species? species that like to cover our modesty? All of these aliens crashing, like where are their little alien suits? Come on. Coming into number four, we have Kodak confirms, allegedly anyway. In 2014, a UFO expert, sorry, a UFO expert, Tom Carey, was sent images from a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but claimed that she had worked with the Secret Service. The image was reportedly taken at Area 51 following the Roswell crash and seems to show a bug-like alien. Let's have a look, shall we? The image seems to support what a number of people who used to work at the Area 51 have said about the facility, including Robert Lazar and staff members from the esteemed Lockheed Martin firm. But like seriously, come on, is this an actual image of an alien? Can we trust anything in the age of Photoshop? It seems that Kerry thought of that and sent the image to Kodak themselves, who were able to confirm that it was taken in 1947. Again. Allegedly. If they sent him a letter saying this, then I haven't seen it. When speaking to the press, Carey said, What's interesting is, is that the film is dated in 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it. And he said that yes, this film strip and the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. From the emulsion on the image, it's not something like it's been photoshopped today. If Kodak, did call this authentic? I haven't seen any certification. Coming into number three, we have another alien, of course. In 2012, Chicago videographer Adam Dew received a call from his former business partner Joseph Beeson. He claimed that he had something to show him, and boy did he. Beeson had a private disposal unit sister, and she'd come across a box of photographs that seemed to have been taken by someone close to President Eisenhower. He was in a number of the images himself, as were Bing Crosby and and Clark Gable. Two of the images she had been tasked with disposing were absolutely outrageous. Get a load of them for yourself. That's right, it is a small withered brown body of an alien in a glass case. And this was all among the images of the president, which is pretty crazy. The images were found in the garage of a woman named Hilda Blair Ray near Sedona in Arizona. Now the pair did believe that the images were linked to Area 51 and Roswell. They sent the images to none other than Tom Carey. Tom once again believed that the images looked just 
like what witnesses had described in the Roswell crash. Let's have another look, shall we? It really does kind of look like an alien wrapped in some kind of cloth, but unfortunately for Tom Carey, the image turned out to be of a mummified corpse of an Aztec child and not a secret leak from Area 51. Our final two, I have to say, are pretty convincing. It's not alien stuff, but I do think that these are secret pictures from Area 51. Coming into number two, we have the strange plane. Here's an image of something that looks like a strange aircraft, or something reportedly taken at Area 51 anyway. It is known that the United States Air Force is present at the facility, and several spy planes have been developed there, including the U 2 spy plane and the SR 71 Blackbird, and possibly others like the Rumored Aurora Project. So so, what is the plane in this image? I don't actually know. Could it be one of the alien aircraft that allegedly whistleblower Bob Lazar talked about reverse engineering? Or is it another spy plane? Finally, coming into number one, we have an image of a secret plane crash covered up. It seems an A 12 spy plane, possibly the one pictured above, crashed in 1963 after taking off from the secret airbase. The crash happened in Wendover, Utah, when Area 51 pilot Ken Colmer was testing the plane's subsonic engines at low altitude. The pilot ejected from the plane crash, after which he was subjected to hypnosis and doping to make sure that he relayed the incident and how it occurred honestly and truthfully. Here are the previously classified images of the crash. Now, As you can see, vehicles raced to recover the wreckage, which was extremely sensitive to the United States Air Force. It seems a government sanitation team was deployed to remove all traces of the spy plane. To me, that sounds very, very strange. So too does it that they kept the images of this plane crash a secret for such a long time. Do you think it really was a spy plane that crashed, or given the response, something much more sensitive? Starting off at number 10 now, we have Edward Paisnell. He's also known as the Beast of Jersey. He was a notorious sex offender who terrorized people on the island of Jersey in the English Channel between 1960 and 1971. This is what he wore when breaking into people's homes at night a rubber mask and nail studded wristlets. He would attack women and children. He was convicted of 13 counts of assault. Sadly, that is thought to be only the tip of the iceberg, and there are perhaps many more victims than that. Paisnell was sentenced to 30 years in prison and later died on the Isle of Wight in 1994. You guys think number 9, the demonic boy photograph. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've probably seen this photo at some point. All those late nights when you're scrolling through Reddit, you've probably seen this at some point. I know I have. And every time I see it, I'm kind of like, mm, it looks pretty real. It's pretty haunting. You know, when you see a photo, sometimes you get bad vibes. Like it registers in your brain as something scary and real. Like you want to find something that looks fake about the photo, but it's tough. This photo was taken inside the Amityville house in 1976. It appears to be a young boy or ghost, spirit, demon, whatever, with glowing white eyes. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared. And it makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Like he knew something was coming almost, he didn't want to get caught. That's the creepiest part here. A photographer named Gene Campbell took it, and Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at the time. Yeah, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring universe. This was a real thing. They were on this case in real life. This photo was revealed three years after it was taken, and it was revealed on the Merv Griffin show. Imagine seeing this on a show, like Jimmy Kimmel whips this out. It's like, hey, we're going to play Plinko. Check out this demon. Many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there prior during the 1974 event. Now, we're still trying to cover this one, but what do you guys think? Is this an elaborate hoax? Is this a young boy? Or is this one of the many demons that was said to haunt the house? Sound off down below. Number eight, the SS Watertown. This picture here perhaps is one of the creepiest on this list. I'm not sure what to think of this one. It comes from 1924 and it shows what appears to be two older men or two older figures almost. I don't know, it's water, it's hard to tell. Some believe it's James Courtney and Michael Meehan in the water. Now the two had previously died and were buried at sea, hence that's why their first thought was them as to who it was. Other crew members saw these strange faces in the water as well. So when they turned back to get another look, five out of the six photos showed nothing. This was the only photo that showed what they saw. Are these the two lost crewmen or is the vessel haunted by sinister forces? Number seven, backseat driver. This photo is from 1959. Okay, it was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery. 
And the photo at first glance is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now the man in the back seat however, that back left seat, we have no idea who that was. Her husband apparently was the only guy in the car at the time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, like try this. This is a really hard shot, even with phones now. It would be hard back in the day. It's like he's appearing to us through the seat almost with that angle. So either this is a lie, which happens often, people can lie, and a man was sitting in the back left seat, or like Mabel thinks, maybe this is her dead mother-in-law. Now, if she had said father-in-law, I think maybe it was his spirit, but this for sure looks like an older gentleman with a collar or something. Kind of looks like, uh, dare I say it, the devil. I don't know, I read a lot of comic books. Number six, Coventry Society Demon. You may be thinking, some of these may not be demons, Taylor. Maybe they're just nice spirits who stuck around after they passed. Yeah, while it's nice to believe that, photos like this convince me otherwise. This is from the Coventry Freeman Society, and it shows everybody at this event dressed to the nines. But when you look at the top left corner over here, you see a hooded figure. Somebody that clearly doesn't belong with the vibe in this room at this event. Nobody else was seen also at any point at that night wearing a hood like this. So of course many believe it was a dark part of the afterlife photobombing this event. Honestly, I totally believe that. This is a weird one. The hood, it's... I, maybe I've been watching Harry Potter lately. I don't know. Maybe it's a Dementor. We actually don't know. Number five. The ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost. I included it, it's kind of nice, but you never really know, honestly. This one, I did some research, it's creepy. Any sort of spirit, I don't welcome. Yeah, I don't gamble on the afterlife. I'm actually all set. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987. A woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England, so of course, she did the classic tourist thing and got a photo in the cockpit. We all do it at some point, but do you ever think of who may have died in that exact spot before? After the age of 10 years old, I was like, you know what? I understand ghosts. I'm not gonna sit in that tank. I'm good, thanks. People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. Now, next time you wanna sit in the pilot's seat, look around for spirits, because this image was developed and it appears that somebody or something was in the helicopter with Miss Sayer the whole time. Number four, the Paris Demon. Originally, the tunnels under Paris were built for stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. Cemeteries were starting to fill up, and I mean that in a literal sense, and humans didn't figure out how to be clean, so bodies would just be laying on the sides of the roads. They started to pile up over time, so the solution was to use these catacombs. They were no longer needed for those mines anymore, so might as well use them as a mass graveyard. And now we have the scariest basement in the world. We have walls of skulls that on one hand, it's cool as hell, it's natural history, it's gothic, yet beautiful, but when Google Maps tried to give a user an up-close look, it seemed to have caught a shadowy demon figure. With more than six million souls laying down there, it doesn't shock me to hear about something like this at all. There's a video of the street view and in it you can see this figure. Check it out yourself. Number three, demons are us. For this next one, we'll be going down the Lego aisle. Yeah, how fun. A haunted Toys R Us. Can you imagine all those toys starting up at night by themselves? Boom. Bay Area's haunted Toys R Us is no longer a thing. Thankfully, as of 2018, that location closed down, but its tales, they live on forever. The Sunnyvale Toys R Us demonic presence appeared in the background of this photo. But of course, like others on this list, the people present at the time of the photo swear that nobody else was there. It's like everyone has bad memory, everyone has good memory, I can't really tell right now. It's like, mm, could this be a spirit or a demon caught on tape that just happens to be at a Toys R Us? I vote yes. Employees talked about creepy things happening there at night all the time, and the Sunnyvale store is indeed haunted by more than one ghost. That's what people say. The store stood where the Murphy farm once stood, so many think the spirit is the ghost of Johnny Johnson. I don't know, the fact that Ouija boards are a toy, a toy that is commonly used to, I don't know, communicate with spirits, maybe closing these doors was the best call. I don't think we welcomed in any good spirits. I don't think any spirits are clocking in for work, you know what I mean? Now it's closed, so I'm like, it didn't work. Whatever we tried, didn't work. Number two, ghost boots. These boots are made for haunting, and that's just what they'll do. Yeah, I put a pair of boots on this list. That's where we're at now. This photo of a young girl may look like a classic family trip, but upon closer inspection, it seems like somebody or something is standing behind her. Now, of course, her father said that nobody was behind her at the time that it was taken, and I agree, that, and like, honestly, and I believe him. Honestly, that would be pretty weird if he was like, hey, can you stand right here? Yeah, no, are you behind my daughter, don't move, but you stand right here in this open field, thanks. Ka-ching. 
I don't believe it, I don't buy it, it's weird. This shot was taken at Zushi Zenigawa, Japan, and you can see boots and what looks like clothing sticking out from behind the child's elbow. The kid's father said, I took a few photos and when I was looking through them at night, I noticed the boots behind her. I took several photos in the same spot, but only one of them had boots. You always see that in movies, right? At night they're going through and they see like it's 2 a.m. It's never at a Walmart while it's being developed. They don't find these photos in a bright, busy area. It's always in like a dark kitchen. Ugh, it's creepy. So he freaked out and then put it on Reddit and then now we're here. Full circle. And finally, coming in at number one, cave drawings. I know these aren't photos, but come on, there's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin, right? Let's do it, let's go back, let's turn the clocks back. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. These Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at. They were created from humans about 20,000 years ago, and it's now considered a heritage site. There's many of these caves around the world. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there in the Lascaux Caves and taking a look yourself, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948 but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. Learning about our history is challenging, and when it's slowly fading away, that surely doesn't help. Just gotta hold your breath while you read? This is crazy. I'm currently reading a book called Supernatural by Graham Hancock, and in it, he tries to dig through history to find the origins of spirituality, and markings in caves like these ones from ages ago definitely help. They resemble these demon-looking creatures almost, and this is long before religion. These drawings were supposedly from hallucinations, but many believe it's one of the first accounts of a demon interacting with a human. It's just drawn on a cave wall. Peck Merle is a cave in France that also has these strange drawings and some say they resemble aliens, others of course voting demons. What do you guys think? This is from 25,000 years ago. Kicking off the list at number 10, glyphosate. We'll start this wacky list off with perhaps one of the coolest things that I've seen online. Also one of the weirdest things for sure. This was posted by a Reddit user Thunderbolt and it was in Tons of communities. I've seen this video pop up numerous places. The internet knows me so well. It looks otherworldly. I thought this video was in slow-mo. Nope. Take a look. I had to watch it a few times. This looks like it's in slow motion, but when the camera moves away, that's clearly not the case. So what's going on here? What am I looking at? What in the avatar is going on? This is turbulent flow, and the speed matches that of the camera's shutters. It's kind of like footage of a helicopter. You know, sometimes it'll fly through the air, and it looks like it's just still just doing this. It's the weirdest thing ever. Really, it's the propellers that are matching the camera's shutter speeds. It's odd. But in this case, it's really odd. Imagine sending this to your boss to check in at work. Yeah, the ectoplasm's in slow-mo again, so it's gonna be a while. Send. Next up at number nine now, we have Blanche Monnier. In 1901, the Paris Attorney General received an anonymous letter saying that a woman in Paris was being held prisoner against her will. When police arrived at the scene, this was what they saw. Blanche had been locked away in a secret room by her own mother for 25 years. She hadn't even seen sunlight in all of that time. In 1876, at the age of 25, her mother had locked her away after she tried to marry a lawyer who was not to her mother's liking. Her mother and brother continued living their lives after that, pretending to mourn the loss of Blanche, but the whole time she was living in this secret room. When police found her, the mother was arrested, she became ill and died 15 days later. Her brother was found to be mentally incapacitated. As for Blanche, she suffered from mental health problems and lived out the next 12 years of her life in a psychiatric hospital before dying at the age of 64. Next up at number 8 now, we have Reynaldo Dagza. He was a politician from the Philippines who photographed his family outside of their home on New Year's Day. The moment he took this photo, he was shot and killed by the man you can see in the background of this picture. A member of the past away gang claimed to have shot him as retribution for being shot in the head by some of his associates during a shootout months earlier. Now this picture is thought to actually be one of the only examples, if not the only example, of someone capturing their own assassination on film. How mental is that? Moving on to number 7 now, we have Rodney Alcala. He's an American convicted rapist and serial killer who was sentenced to death in California in 2010 for five murders committed there between 1977 and 1979. In 1978, he was a contestant on the ABC game show The Dating Game. Here's a picture of him on the show. It's made even more chilling when you realize that by this point, he had already killed two women. The host introduced him as a successful photographer who got his start when his father found him in the dark room at the age of 13 fully developed. Between takes you might find him skydiving or motorcycling. He won a date with a contestant on the show called Cheryl Bradshaw. She later refused to go out with him because she found him creepy. Yeah. 
seems that her instincts were 100% accurate on that one. Coming in at number 6 now, we have Electrical Charge. Now at first glance, this picture looks like quite a wholesome one. It's a picture of 18 year old Michael McQuilkin and his 12 year old brother Sean. The year was 1975 and they had just climbed California's Morro Rock Mountain. Their hair that's standing up from the electrical charge is a sure sign that a lightning strike is about to occur. They didn't heed the warning from nature though and just moments after this picture was taken, they were struck by lightning. Now some online articles claim that they died, but this wasn't the case. In an interview decades later, Michael said he remembers a flash of white light as bright as arc wielding, a deafening explosion and the feeling of becoming weightless and being lifted off the ground. They were knocked unconscious and suffered third degree burns, but learnt their lesson for life. Moving on to number 5 now, we have Omeira Sanchez. She was a 13 year old Colombian girl killed in the aftermath of the 1985 eruption of the Nevada del Ruiz volcano. After her home was destroyed, she was pinned beneath the debris of her own house where she remained trapped in water for 3 days. When authorities found her, she was in good spirits. They attempted to pull her out, but found the task impossible without breaking her legs in the process. Each time a person tried to pull her up, the water pulled around her, rising so that it seemed she would drown if they let her go. They found that her legs were caught under a door made of bricks with her dead aunt's arms clutched tightly around her legs. Sanchez eventually died as a result of either gangrene or hypothermia. The photographer felt the photo was a way to report properly on the courage and the suffering and the dignity of this little girl. Next up at number 4 now we have Columbine. This picture may look like a normal school photo, but it has a dark story attached to it. It is the class of 99 Columbine school, taken just a few weeks before the infamous school shooting there that killed 12 students and one teacher as well as injuring a further 21 people. The shooters were Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. In this picture, they can be seen in the top left with their friends pretending to shoot guns. This school shooting is regarded as one of the deadliest high school massacres in US history and sparked debates over gun control laws, high school cliques, subcultures and bullying. Next up at number 3 now, we have Goebbels glare. This is a picture of Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister and a close friend of Adolf Hitler's. The picture was taken in 1933 during a League of Nations meeting. The picture captures the exact moment that Goebbels realised that the photographer, Alfred Eisen stated, was Jewish. The hatred in Goebbels eyes tells the story of a man who pushed Nazi propaganda onto Germans in order to control them and pave the way for the holocaust in the years to come. 12 years after this photo was taken, on May 1st 1945, with the Russian army closing in on Berlin and the Nazis defeated, Goebbels and his wife administered cyanide to their 6 children before also killing themselves. Next up at number 2 now, we have animal abuse. This is a picture that will enrage any animal lovers out there, it's of Alina Savchenko. She and her friend Alina Orlova were accused of torturing and killing cats and dogs for occult sexual fetish videos that were sent to China. How bizarre is that sentence? The Russian pair were linked to the case after police linked all over to the videos because of a distinctive hand tattoo. They tried to flee as the story gathered over the images, but were eventually detained under house arrest. When she was detained, Savchenko called herself the Devil's Duchess. In one picture, she is shown holding a recently killed puppy's heart with the caption, It's for you, Anubis, a reference to the ancient Egyptian god of the dead. And finally, number one now, we have Panama. We're going to look at more than one picture here, there's quite a few. They are of Dutch tourists Chris Kremers and Lisanne Froon. In 2014, the pair went missing after taking a day hike near the town of Boquet in Panama. These pictures were found on their recovered camera, which contains over 100 photos, all taken within 10 days of the girls going missing. Some locals found bone fragments and a backpack believed to be owned by one of them. Later, DNA tests confirmed that the remains did belong to them. The last few pictures are perhaps the most disturbing, taken in the middle of the night in the jungle a full 8 days after the girls went missing. Many people were stumped by the mystery of what happened to them and why they were taking pictures of the jungle after 8 days of being lost. The leading theory is that they fell off a cliff, injuring one of them so that she couldn't move. The uninjured one then waited with her friend for 8 days before leaving her. Why leave in the middle of the night though? Well, some people think something scared her into suddenly leaving perhaps a jaguar or other predator. In the end though, both of them died and these pictures are the only creepy clues as to piecing together what happened. In our number 10 spot we have the Moko Mokai collection. 
Well, we are starting off strong with a truly scary and disturbing photo. This is a photograph of a man named Major General Horatio Gordon Robley, who had a collection of 35 heads that he stole from the native Maori people. Apparently in New Zealand, there were people called Maori that preserved the heads of fallen people. The heads were chopped off, boiled, smoked, dried in the sun, and then dipped in a shark oil before being displayed like a trophy. Whoa. They are known as the Moko Mokai. Anyways, these heads were robbed by the British when they moved into New Zealand, and this pic is one of the guys who stole them. Honestly, the man feels just as chilling to look at as the heads. Does anyone else agree? It's probably because he's holding something that looks like it could be a sharp object that might have helped in the chopping process. I don't know, could be just me. Number nine, player two has entered. I saw this video again a while back online as I spend most of my time on Reddit after midnight, you know, as do the rest of us. And for months now, nobody can figure out what is happening in this video. Take a look. <laughs> was he running beside the truck? How, how did he just appear? Was he hanging onto the side of the truck like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible? How is he so calm, cool, and collect? He waits a second after the truck pulls away. He waits a second, almost as if he's still loading. Hmm, maybe some other dimensions going on here. People are saying it's an edit, others are saying the van door was open, and then others are arguing in the comments about which doors belong on which vans. Then there's also an argument about wheels and doors, but I think that's something that's separate, that's totally separate. Whichever universe this man came from, uh, welcome, first of all, and you've caused so many headaches already, so. Great start. Number eight, too many beetles. Before you get grossed out, I don't mean that type of beetle, although that would be pretty bad as well. Bleh, gross. This video was shared to the lovely world of, you guessed it, Reddit. User H. Mumberto was having just a normal day, but there's like six of the same car that appear out of nowhere. There's the exact same Volkswagen Beetle, same color and everything. Two are parked, one's driving into town, another's driving out of town, and one is lost. Can't figure out which town they're in. I hope they're filming a movie or something here because this is honestly pretty creepy. I would film this as well, for sure. This is like the Truman Show in real life. Oh God, that movie messed me up when I was younger. If this was me, I wouldn't be nearly as calm as whoever's filming this video. That's so many white beetles just around in one small area. That's like in GTA 5, when you get in one car, then all of a sudden every car around you is the exact same. You're like, what's going on here? It's trippy, it's very noticeable. I couldn't imagine seeing this in real life, so thank you for sharing. That being said, it's not bizarre for some places to manufacture the same model of a car, but this, I don't know, it's creepy. This is like definitely a glitch in the matrix. Number seven, three dogs. This is the most bizarre video I've seen in a while, straight up. This was almost number one, but we get into more of the, you know, cosmic stuff for number one, so, you know. Animals follow each other. This is a known fact in nature, but this right here is next level. At first, I thought these were three cats, because, you know, cats are a bit more insane than dogs. You know, if I had to bet on which animal would run into a glass window three times in a row, I would probably say a cat. Cats are wild. They'll stare at nothing for like 42 minutes. Creepy, I don't like that. This video shows three dogs confusing the hell out of a staff. It looks like a clinic of some sorts or a hospital. One dog runs into the glass, it's okay, and it runs off. Another dog does the same thing, it's okay, runs off. And then in comes a third dog, just to continue confusing the staff and myself watching this video. The fact that they're all the same color and size and hits the same window, I mean, something's going on here. This is actually crazy. Maybe it's one dog and he's just really, really fast. He's just doing laps. Number six, the cold spot. Okay, getting more cosmic now into these dimensions and parallel universes. Okay, so strap in. In 2004, NASA's WMAP satellite saw one of the most mysterious and perhaps one of the most ominous findings in science history, the cold spot. And no, I don't mean your ex's heart. Nothing is colder than that. That's, that's another list, we'll save that one. The cold spot is for starters massive. When the universe was created a good, you know, 14 billion years ago, it left some cosmic microwave background for us to explore and, you know, just live in. Specifically, this one really cold spot of radiation. While the rest of the universe expands expands and cools down over time in millions of years, this area has remained colder than any of the surrounding area. Just radiation left over from the very beginning of our universe. Another theory by scientists is that this cold spot is a result of collision between two different universes, which is interesting. That's when things start to get a little mm -hmm, mind bendy. Could this spot be an icy cold doorway into another bubble universe? Perhaps the first evidence that proves the multiverse theory, aside from the show Loki? Maybe. We'll have to see. Just gotta stick around and wait for something to happen. They have that collider that may or may not help, that I may or may not talk about later on. Number five, the Milky Sea Phenomenon. I've seen this with my very own eyes, and if you get a chance to see bioluminescence in the ocean, do it. What an odd request. Everyone's like, okay, finally, it's about time. 
I'm going to do it. The Milky Sea phenomenon was first observed back in 1864. Captain Raphael Semez journaled it aboard his CSS Alabama, and he had no idea what the hell he was looking at. Even today, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works in nature. So this captain obviously was shaken after seeing something like this. He wrote about passing from the deep blue waters into a patch of water so bright that it startled him. A startled explorer. Ah, yes, nothing worse than that. He wrote down his thoughts and feelings. Remember, this is 1864, long before the movie Avatar was out in theaters, so this is all new to human beings. Captain Raphael wrote, the whole face of nature seemed to have changed. With a little stretch of the imagination, the CSS Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lit up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. That's what I'm gonna write down. What am I looking at. Guy thought he drifted into Pandora. That's quite the quote, Captain Semez. Thank you for sharing with all those years ago. I don't think he's watching this video. That's not an exaggeration either. This phenomenon is something out of a movie. It's so alien. Bioluminescence is part of the reason for this ghostly bright blue appearance, but sailors who have experienced this say there's something sinister about it as well. So who really knows? To this day, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works, but it's continuing to grow and blow our minds. We just discovered a glowing shark recently. Yeah, just a new shark, a new glowy shark. That's what we're dealing with now. So this captain would be surprised if he saw what we have now. The Milky Sea phenomenon can span around one 100,000 square miles. So again, this one's pretty large and it can last for a few nights. So I don't blame these sailors for getting spooked. In 2005, we got low orbit satellites to snap a pic of this phenomenon and on a list of otherworldly dimensions, this is perhaps the most otherworldly event that happens on our planet. Number four, Large Hadron Collider. We can't have a list on other dimensions and not talk about the Large Hadron Collider. This project is testing the laws of physics. We mentioned earlier the remnants left over from the Big Bang and all that. Well, scientists are currently trying to make another Big Bang. Well, a little bang, a smaller bang. Hopefully a smaller bag. This project was put in motion by CERN. They're trying to identify what dark matter is, seeing how, you know, it makes up a lot of our universe. And the project also aims at trying to discover tiny black holes. And if you've seen Interstellar, uh, this could mean a few things if done correctly. We could maybe open a door to a parallel universe. So us humans are like, eh, you know what? Let's try and smash some particles together, see what happens. So now we have a 16 mile long underground ring that blasts proton beams close to the speed of light. Then they make them collide into each other, ideally creating a black hole. How fun for us. The project hasn't been successful yet, but when it is, I feel like we'll know. We'll have an idea, you know? We'll have a feeling in our hearts. Or we might turn into spaghetti instantly. We'll know something worked or didn't for that matter. Number three, the Philadelphia Experiment. Perhaps one of the most bizarre tales when it comes to other dimensions. And this one has credibility behind it too. It pops up in my Reddit a lot, a lot. The 1943 Philadelphia Experiment. If you haven't heard of it, sorry. This is, gonna, this is gonna upset you maybe. This World War II conspiracy theory takes place on the USS Eldridge, this destroyer class ship. And they were conducting these secret experiments aboard this ship to gain power over naval warfare. One of these experiments was to create this technology that makes the ships invisible on radar. That's an important note. Invisible on radar, not like... But when the generators were fired up to try this, the hull apparently lit up with this green and blue light. Then the ship actually disappeared. Invisible IRL, not just radar. It was then seen at a naval shipyard in Virginia before the same thing happened again, and then it appeared back in Philadelphia, apparently. This sounds intense as is, but when you hear about the crew on board, it gets... Pretty scary. Some of course went mad after the dimensional dip while others had physical effects from the cosmic commute. Yeah, some haunting details in that one. Some dude's arm was like just in the wall or something. It was horrible. I can't even talk about it on YouTube. It's gross. Number two, Tartarus. Okay, we're getting a bit historical in the other dimensions for this one now. Number two and one, we're getting deep. Greek mythology, here we go. According to Greek mythology, I'm talking like way back in 700 BC, Tartarus was a deep abyss. A dungeon, really, full of, you know, suffering and torture and everything bad that you can think of, just, you know, probably in there. This place full of suffering, of course, resides in Hades. If you played the game Hades, you know exactly where I'm talking about. It's the second world. It's so hard. Hades is a realm where the dead go after their, you know, time is run out. It doesn't mean that it's a fiery abyss per se, that's just where Tartarus comes in. Tartarus is where the underworld devil theme kicks in. Plato wrote about these souls of the dead and how they were judged and after they, you know, would have to cross a river of the dead and all that stuff. So that's definitely some other dimension stuff that we're talking about there when it comes to the religious history. If you weren't a great human being, you were of course judged as so. And subsequently you were sent to Tartarus. 
the bad place. In Greek poet Hesiod's Theogony, Tartarus was offspring of Aether and Gaia. They were the third of the primordial deities. Even Zeus mentioned this place in the Iliad. Zeus states that Tartarus is as far beneath Hades as heaven is high above Earth. So that's a lot of dimensions. We're in the middle right now, which is nice. I want to stay here. I'm like, ah, maybe. Definitely not. Here. We're good. And finally, number one, Duat. The Egyptian afterlife. Yeah, we don't have photos of this one, but we have some really old art, which is almost more compelling. Otherwise known as the Fields of Reeds or Fields of Offering, Duat is a place ancient Egyptians believed came after life. In fact, they believed that life on Earth was just a mere fraction of an eternal life that we're meant to live. Not ending in death, but rather forever lasting in peace and harmony. Doesn't that sound great? We love that. They believed there was more to the body failing. You know, the soul must continue. It must go on. Somewhere. Born on Earth, believing in the gods and the deities known as the Seven Hathers, once death did arrive, you're just entering another realm. But hopefully the gods have judged you so you can live in this paradise realm known as the Fields of Reeds. Not do what? You want that one, definitely not the other one. The thing is, you don't just pass on and then enter this nice realm where you can drink wine and you know, two-step with your relatives. No, you have to earn your spot. You have to show the gods that you're a good human being. This paradise is just really a mirror image of your previous mortal life. So if you're not kind to others now, well, this field of dreams can easily turn into a field of eternal nightmares. Ancient Egyptians' beliefs in hell predates Jewish, Christian, and Islamic visions. The concept of hell in ancient Egypt predates the concept of hell in more of these modern religions which is kind of baffling. With the god Osiris believed to be the lord of said underworld, we have the coffin text and the Book of the Dead now to study up while we're still, you know, living like lousy mortals. Maybe the Egyptians were onto something here. Maybe the sky really is an iron container of water for the gods. Maybe we have to earn our spot in this cosmos. I don't know, one way or another, there's definitely more than one dimension. Either cats or Egyptian afterlifes. So we're gonna see one of the two. In our number 10 spot. This photo just looks like a silly good time between two boys, but what happens next is when it gets kind of crazy. The two in the photo are brothers, Michael and Sean McQuilkin, and it is from August 20th, 1975, when they were at Morro Rock in Sequoia National Park in California. The photo was taken by their sister Mary after they all thought that their hair standing up was absolutely hilarious and decided to snap a few photos to remember the moment. Well, they surely will never forget it because just a few moments after this photo was taken, they were actually struck by lightning. One of the brothers said that he raised his hand into the air and that the ring he had on was buzzing, and then suddenly they were all on the ground and smoke was pouring out of Sean's back. The good news is that they all survived the lightning that day, but I bet it certainly wasn't the day that they had planned. In our number nine spot, we have the woman in the attic. Well, the story behind this picture is extremely chilling, so chilling that I definitely threw on some show tunes and sang for a moment after reading about it. In case you're curious, Wicked is always my musical of choice. Speaking of Wicked, this was not planned, I swear. The woman in this photograph is a real woman who had a wicked mother who locked her in an attic for 25 years. An anonymous tip to the authorities in 1901 was how she was found, 55 pounds in a room filled with feces, old meat, and insects. Thankfully, she was okay health-wise, but mentally, as you can expect, not so much. This is a photo of her and how she was found. Truly horrible to see. While nothing while looking at this photograph and seeing her long brown hair, I'm now convinced that this is where Disney got some of their inspiration for the movie Tangle. There are way too many similarities that I'm sure they took and made a thousand times more light and cheery. In our number eight spot, we have For Sale. This is a photograph from 1948 that honestly, at first glance, I thought it to be some kind of joke. Maybe the young ones in the photograph were being bad and the mom was threatening to sell them. You know, the old tricks parents would play when children's age wasn't a phone call away. Anyways, apparently this is a picture of something very real that was happening due to poverty at the time and that instantly makes the picture chilling and sad. Apparently the mother and father of these young ones, Mr. and Mrs. Chalofo, needed money desperately and so they sold them. It was said that the mother was paid to stage this photo and perhaps that is why there is an air of phoniness to it, but no later than two years after all of their young ones had been sold to families. In in our number seven spot, we have On the Brink of Death. A man by the name of Robert Overacker decided that he wanted to raise awareness for the homeless. And how was he going to do it? Oh, by doing a stunt that would attract the masses. He 
was going to jet ski over Niagara Falls. And this is a picture of him doing just that. This was the last picture of him taken as he fell to his death as his parachute did not open as planned. Apparently one of the police officers at the Niagara area has said that it would have been like hitting cement as he fell 180 feet. Wow. What a haunting photo to look at. He was only 39 as well. This is why I will never skydive because, well, there isn't a 100% survival rate, so there's that. Also, I'm a chicken, so there's also that. In our number six, we have the two-headed dog. I always feel like puking when I see this photo. It is just the most inhumane thing ever, and it makes my heart hurt to look at. This is a photo that was taken in the 50s of the Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikov and his science experiment, the two-headed dog. He beheaded the head off of one of the dogs and attached it to the other dog. He sewed their circulatory systems together and connected their vertebrae with plastic strings, and after the surgery was completed, both of the heads could hear, see, smell, and act as a normal dog would. The dog survived only four days before passing away. This scientist's research led to the creation of transplants, but wow, was this a horrible thing to have done. Also, he apparently only did this experiment due to boredom, so perhaps my anger stems from having learned that. In our number five spot, we have Mary Reeser. This is a picture of a blown up Mary Reeser. This picture showcased quite the story from its time. On July the 2nd of 1951 in St. Petersburg, Florida, a woman by the name of Mary Reeser somehow caught fire and all that remained was a part of her skull and her left leg surrounded by her ashes. She was discovered by her landlady and after the investigation, the police were unable to say as to how she could have possibly caught fire. It was this story where the idea of spontaneous human combustion was theorized, but scientists today say that they are almost certain that this could not be the case. But what is weird is that most of her House was largely devoid of fire damage, so it makes no sense. I suppose we shall never know, and this picture will continue to scare us till the end of time. In our number four spot, we have the truck stop killer. In the 70s, there was a killer by the name of Robert Ben Rhodes who would pick up while he was driving his commercial truck across America, and then he would kill them. He was suspected to have taken the life of over 50 women. Anyways, when he was finally caught, a picture of a named Regina K. Walters was found along with many other photos of women inside Robert's home. This photo is believed to be taken right before he killed Regina. Man, oh man, how horrible. This is quite chilling to look at. Sometimes I'm so surprised when evidence like this is leaked to the public. This must have been haunting for her family and friends to see. In our number three spot, we have the Radium Girls. This is another chilling photo of a girl that was a part of the Radium Girls, which were a number of women known for working at factories in the 20s where they were exposed to so much radium that they actually would come home glowing in the dark. Unfortunately, the prolonged exposure caused them to have a series of problems such as their jaws began to swell up and fell off, their vertebrae would collapse, and eventually they passed of cancer. So knowing that this is a pic of one of those women makes this picture so much worse than it looks. However, it does already look like a scary picture of a woman in pain. Pretty scary to think about the amount of people working in factories today or working with technology that might bring about future death that we haven't been able to predict yet. In our number two spot, we have Annalise Michelle. Yeah, this picture will definitely give you the heebie-jeebies even without knowing the backstory. But what if I told you that this is a pic of a woman that was believed to be possessed by the devil? Yeah. This photo just got a hundred times scarier, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, this is a photo of a young lady by the name of Annalise, and she was a pretty devout Catholic German and grew up in the 60s. She was completely normal until she suddenly started hallucinating, eating spiders, routinely convulsing, and oh, just drinking her own urine. She claimed that the devil was possessing her, and she would later go on to have 67 exorcisms. Nothing worked, and she ended up passing away from malnutrition at the age of 23. Her tale is what inspired the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yep, 
deeply chilling. In our number one spot, we have the Pioneer's Defense. Save the best for last. This is probably one of the creepiest photos that I have ever seen. This is a historical image taken by the Russian photographer Viktor Bula in 1937. If it isn't creepy enough without the explanation, Here's the explanation. These are people that were part of a Soviet youth group called the Young Pioneers, and they are wearing gas masks because they were in the middle of a military preparation drill, as this was during a time when Joseph Stalin was the dictator and no one knew if death was around the corner. Yikes. Sometimes I am so, so thankful to be alive right now, even though it does seem as if we're going through a bit of a mental war in this day and age, a physical war is way scary to think about being a part of. All right, coming in at number 10, we have the blast off chair. This is officially a declassified black and white image of a secret Air Force project taking place in the desert lands surrounding Area 51. In this image, we can see the United States Air Force running a very exciting test indeed. We see a car and an aerodynamic looking vehicle together. And then a whopping great chair that seems to have blasted off with a person in it. Maybe it's the dummy. Up, up, and away. The plane like vehicle says Test 24 on it and has a camera monitoring it. We don't know exactly what's happening here. I think context, I imagine, would be key, but we don't have any. If you think that, that mountain range looks familiar, here it is again at number nine. In our number nine spot, this photo was taken by David Seymour in 1948. This photo was taken in Warsaw, and the child in the photo is named Terezka, who is in a home for emotionally disturbed children after being raised in a concentration camp. The drawing on the blackboard is what she drew when the children were asked to draw home. While it is obviously common for children to have indistinguishable drawings, her backstory and the look in her eyes really tell a story. I hope she was able to grow and overcome some of the horrible things that she had been put through. I really wish I could know exactly what she was trying to draw and depict. In our number eight spot, this is a photo from 1991 and is of Rajiv Gandhi, who is the sixth prime minister of India. He took office after his mother had been assassinated and was the youngest prime minister at only 40 years old. This photo was taken by a 21 year old local photographer named Haribabu, but little did everyone know this would be the last photo he took and the last photo ever taken of Rajiv. Moments after this photo was taken, the woman in the bottom left corner with the orange flowers in her hair approached Rajiv and when she she bent down to touch his feet, she detonated a belt of explosives that she had on under her dress. This explosion ended up killing them all and around 13 other people. Haribabu's camera ended up staying intact throughout the blast and this is how we were able to retrieve this photo. Coming in at number 7. This photo carries quite the backstory. This photo is of Violet Spears who was born in Elgin, Scotland in 1839. She was married at 15 and by the time she was 22 she had 4 children. At 33, her husband ended up passing away due to a hunting accident and Violet then packed up her and the kids and went to her sisters where they all remained for 2 years. After these two years, Violet just disappeared from her sisters, leaving all of her children behind. No one heard from her for a year after she left, but money began to be sent to them monthly. In 1876, a medium and hypnotist named Madame Violet began to gain popularity in Edinburgh. She had a small following at the time that she called her hive. Slowly her seances began to get more elaborate and outrageous, and she slowly began to ask clients to donate small bits of blood, saying that it helped her connect to the spirits. She would actually drink the blood given to her and she has been quoted saying that this element returned to me had been missing my whole life. Eventually her hive grew and they all ended up living together and would only come out at night. They would attract and convince men and women, usually with the help of drugs and alcohol, to donate a bit of blood and most often would convince these people to leave their lives to come and join the hive. The hive continued to grow for the coming decade, but when the son of a prominent councilman joined the hive and ended up developing an infection from the bloodletting and actually died, the hive was condemned and they ended up being disbanded. Madame Violet ended up living until 1930 where she died at the age of 90. In our number 6 spot. 
This photo comes from what is left of the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. This prison used to be the most famous and the most expensive in the world, but now this is the sort of thing that is left of it. This prison is actually now used as a tourist attraction, and it becomes a haunted house during Halloween. The prison used to house some pretty high profile prisoners, such as Scarface himself, Al Capone. The prison was opened in 1829 and was known for its advanced technology for the time. Things like central heating, flush toilets, and shower baths in each cell. These were all considered luxuries in 1829. The first prisoner to be held there was Charles Williams, who was facing a two year sentence for theft. When he arrived at the prison, he had a hood over his head so as to protect his identity, but also so that he wouldn't know what the rest of the prison looked like, so he would be unable to plan an escape. While prison is never good, the craziest thing about this specific one is that all the prisoners lived in isolation. I can't even imagine what that would be like, especially for the people who found themselves in there for long periods of time. Number 5 this photo is a series of self-portraits by the artist William Utter Mullen. In 1995, William was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, which is an incredibly difficult thing to have to go through. William's self-portraits obviously reflect a lot of what was going on in his mind during some of the last years of his life. Part of what Alzheimer's does is that it affects the part of the brain that we use for visualizing things, which is part of the reasons why the paintings began to get so different from the original. This series of paintings is actually sometimes used as a study material for medical students because it does such a wonderful job at portraying something that a person without Alzheimer's wouldn't be able to understand. I think William left the world with something very sad, but also beautiful, poignant, and important. Number 4 This photo comes from the 19th century from the third plague pandemic. This was the first time that the plague had spread to all five continents. While we now know something about what that might have been like, what we haven't had to endure are doctors that are dressed like this. This is a photo of the outfits and masks that plague doctors wore when they would come to your house to treat or diagnose you. The long beak-like noses of the masks are very creepy, but they were used to hold herbs and other nicely scented things because they believed that this would help ward off the bad air, which at the time is what they thought was causing the sickness. The COVID-19 pandemic has been bad enough, so I'm very glad that our doctors and nurses can stick to their scrubs and regular masks. There's something about these outfits that just make it seem like something bad is about to happen. Number three. This photo looks like a big lump of nothing, but it is called an elephant's foot. Don't worry, at first I was worried, but it has nothing to do with elephants and is only named that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor, which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it does still produce a deadly amount but it is said that if you stood in front of it for just 300 seconds, that would be enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it, but I'm glad because now we get to see it and it gives us just a little more insight into what happened that day. Number two. This photo is of a man named Chris McCandless, who may be better known as Alex Supertramp. Chris was a traveler who inspired the book and movie Into the Wild, which were created to follow the story of his life, and more specifically, his final great Alaskan adventure. This photo is unfortunately the last photo taken of Chris while he was on this Alaskan trip, and he ended up passing away in the wilderness. A lot of people have speculated that this photo was taken as his sort of goodbye. It is highly debated how he died, so there isn't quite a concrete answer of what exactly exactly happened to him. It is a very unfortunate end to such a young man's life, but he left quite a legacy. His story has inspired countless people and holds a special place in a lot of people's lives. He was a man who rejected conformity and materialism, and with his life and death, he really left an important message for all of us to take a step back and remember what is really important. While the story has such a sad ending, there's also a lot of beautiful things that we can take from it. And in our number one spot today. This photo was taken by Fred Blackwell on May 28th, 1963, and is actually showing us a moment of protest. The three sitting at the counter are Joan Trumpor, Ann Moody, and their sociology teacher, John Salter. The reason why this photo is so important is because these three are sitting at a white-only counter at Woolworth's Five and Dime store in Jackson, Mississippi, while being assaulted by an angry mob. People are throwing condiments at them, and I'm sure saying some pretty nasty things 
Banks. The two students went to Tougaloo College, which was a black college that ended up being at the core of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. It's amazing to see how brave they are, and a photo like this really is such an important message for us to remember today. Kicking off the list at number 10, the mysterious black tomb. Back in 2018, remains were found by archaeologists in Egypt, and apparently they had never seen the Brendan Fraser classic, The Mummy, because they opened it. Just because, you know, we wanted to see what was inside. They found a massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria and it hasn't been touched in over 2,000 years and we still opened it. These guys wore masks because apparently it had an awful smell. You don't say. I left a banana in my locker in high school for winter break once and honestly, nothing could beat that. That was the worst thing I've ever smelled. Not even a cursed mummy. I don't know, maybe. They opened it and they found three skeletons. Not just one, but three. Nice combo. They also found this brown sewage water just lying there, which I'm sure smelled great. They opened it up two inches and the smell was so foul that the committee that was on the scene, they straight up ran away. It's almost like opening the tomb of a mummy is forbidden and we should never do it again. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said in response to locals freaking out about this that we've opened it and thank God the world has not fallen into darkness. I was the first to put my whole head inside the sarcophagus and here I stand before you, I'm fine. Nice. That was in 2018. How's the world now, Azari? Hmm? Was the mummy juice worth it? Now we're wearing masks every day, not just when we open yucky tombs. Thanks, man. Coming into number nine, we have the Silver Disc Over the Mountains. Sounds like a band name or a good album name. Further back, but clearly in the same sort of area, topography speaking, I came across an image of a man taking a picture of a strange silver disc in the sky. The image is purportedly from Area 51, and it certainly looks like it could be. I'm aware that this image very much could be photoshopped, very easily photoshopped, but perhaps the story I have to tell you will inspire you to give it the benefit of the doubt. There is a road near Area 51 that has been renamed named the Extraterrestrial Highway. It's a 100 mile stretch of State Route 375 near Rachel, Nevada. It was given its whimsical rebranding in 1996. Along this highway, countless people have reported seeing mysterious lights in the sky, especially during the 80s and 90s. Even today, night drivers are baffled by the so-called moving stars. Could it be a UFO similar to that allegedly in this picture? Maybe. But what might this be at number 8? We have what I can only describe as the metal wall. This image was posted in National Geographic and is a declassified image from Area 51. The footnote on the image reads, Full Scale Model Assembly 1159. Now this leads me to believe that this image was taken in November 1959, but honestly, I don't know that for a fact. Although the image is in black and white, which does make me think it's an oldie. While it may be an oldie, it certainly does look futuristic. This could be an early stage development of a spy plane. In fact, I put my money on it. Coming into number seven, we have Beam. We are an ultra light beam. We are an ultra light beam. Honestly, sometimes I do stop to wonder if Kanye West is an alien. Like, he's pretty successful whilst also being a bit strange and aloof and otherworldly. I don't want to be the one to start an unsubstantiated rumor though. Anyway, before we stray too far into salacious speculation, have a look at this ultra light beam legit image taken at Area 51. And I want to know what's going on here and is Kanye West behind it? This black and white image was published as part of a series of declassified images of Area 51 published in National Geographic. Again, context is king, but we simply don't have any. It's hard to tell if this image was taken outdoors, it's kind of blurry and distorted from the light. It could be taken outdoors, but also that could be a curtain backdrop, I just can't tell. If it is a curtain, then perhaps this was taken in a studio, in which case what Hollywood grade stuff is being filmed at Area 51. Some people think that the moon landing was staged there and if this is a studio with a massive model UFO, then maybe. I think I simply need more information. Coming into number six, we have the floaters. Doesn't sound great, does it? In April 2016, large, bizarre, and very much unidentified flying objects were spotted over Area 51. Allegedly, anyway. There are so many fakers and conspiracists out there that it's hard to know what to believe. Three oblong objects were said to have been caught on film from a distance hovering over a hangar. The footage was uploaded to YouTube but has mysteriously been deleted. A still shot of the video, however, does remain. Why was the YouTube video deleted? Did we see too much? Maybe. The real question though is, what are these? Coming in at number 5, is that the TARDIS I see? The Doctor is a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey and he is constantly time travelling. 
The Doctor is a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey and he's constantly travelling time and space and encountering other aliens so it stands to reason that the extraterrestrial may end up at Area 51 at some point. It seems like his TARDIS may have been spotted there in recent years. Have a look at this. Some are hailing this image taken of Area 51 legit, and actually it is, it was taken on Google Earth. Some people think it looks like an alien tower, but others like me are straight up calling it a triangle TARDIS. You can find this image yourself if you type this into Google Earth. On estimation this structure is around 70 feet high and 30 feet wide, and I'm wondering if Doctor, maybe you're there. Some of the Storm Area 51 memes have been claiming ownership of the TARDIS as if it's found there, and to be honest it has been rumoured that the centre is testing time travel, so maybe the Doctor has been captured there, or at least his spaceship. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I've always wanted to be a doctor's assistant so if anyone's watching from casting at BBC, take me. Coming in at number 4 we have the pyramid. There are pretty nuts theories out there circulating that aliens built the pyramids. Why? Well because it would be a feat of strength for humans even today, let alone humans of thousands of years ago. Allegedly former Area 51 worker Bob Lazar claimed that the building contains evidence that aliens have influenced human culture for over 10,000 years. Years, so maybe it's true. Triangles and pyramid shapes are also linked to New World Orders and the Illuminati have also in turn been linked to extraterrestrials so maybe there's something to it. Either way, feast your eyes on this. Pyramid. There is, this is from Google Earth, you can look it up yourself, you just look up the coordinates. A Google Earth image of what looks like a pyramid inside Area 51, right here. Curiouser and curiouser. For those of you who want to look at this yourself, put these coordinates into Google Earth. Some people think that this is proof that Area 51 is harvesting alien technology. Other people think that the structure has a much more normal explanation. What do you think? Let me know. Some classic Area 51 conclusion stuff here at number 3 we have the morgue. Of all of the pictures on this list, of this one I am perhaps the most sceptical, but it is a true classic. This is one of those proof of aliens for reals images circulated in the 1990s, it's kind of a lot like the alien autopsy video. This image was said to have been taken by a whistleblowing worker of Area 51 and leaked to the press. The only thing is, is that alien bodies like this are so easy to fake, in fact even the alien in the alien autopsy video was a model so these very well could be too. Creepy models that I wouldn't want anywhere near me. Still though. The image could have been staged and taken anywhere in the world and honestly it probably was. That being said, maybe it's legit, maybe we're trained not to believe in things like this by the powers that be that don't want us to. Coming into number 2 we have the silver pod. YouTube channel Explore With Us ventured to the land surrounding Area 51 in June 2017. The channel shared exclusive footage with their 700,000 strong following which claimed to show abandoned secret tunnels around Area 51 which looked something like this. sneaky cheeky secret rail tunnel and I'm wondering what it was used for, like smuggling aliens in and out? Question? Later on in their adventure the YouTubers also spotted this very odd sight hidden in the trees, take a look. To me it looks like a silver ball on a triangular plinth. Also it's in the hills surrounding a top secret facility, what does this really mean? Is it some kind of alien communication device or watching device or listening device? So many devices it could be. Ok finally, do you want to see a very scary sight from area 51? Check this out at number 1 and perhaps let it be a warning, we have the bikers. I knew you should, I, I knew, I know. We're gonna give you guys a chance, okay? Get on your bikes, get the f out of here. We'll call Lincoln County and we'll write you each a seven hundred fifty dollar ticket. Okay. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you just like rolled up at Area 51 and tried to see them aliens? Perhaps a little precursor to the whole Storm Area 51 thing. I wouldn't recommend it for this very reason. Meet the bikers who were about to be met with bullets but made a very lucky escape. Dramatic footage was uploaded to YouTube of a biker group who rode up to Area 51, kinda brazenly. As you can see from these images they were met with quote unquote camo dudes. 
The camo dudes come from nowhere in a white jeep and quickly jump out and point firearms at the intruders. The guards tell the guys to get the F out of there. The video from MACD Adventures has had over 7 million views, people love it. This isn't the only instance of this kind of response caught on camera either. YouTube channel Third Phase of the Moon uploaded this video featuring this hairy moment. So that's a response that people get when it's just a few of them swinging by Area 51. What if 3 million people did turn up and quote unquote storm it? I mean, if you're gonna have guns pointed at just a handful of people, what? would the government do? Honestly, it's a question that I'm not sure we want answered. Coming in at number 10, we have a ghost in Cepheus. This looks like a ghost in the ether for sure. It's actually a rather mysterious dusty curtain featuring a very faint reflection of Nebula VDB 152. The reddish tinge you see is ultraviolet light from a star causing a rusty looking luminescence in the nebula dust. Described as a cosmic phantom, this picture was released by NASA on Halloween in 2012 and titled A Ghost in Cepheus. This intergalactic ghost is 1,400 light years away, so arguably a safe enough distance for us to deal with. Who knows how fast this ethereal dust can travel though? Also, who knows what this dust is like up close? I don't trust it. Dust it. Number 9. Chernobyl. One of the worst nuclear disasters of all time happened on April 26, 1986, when reactor number 4 at the Chernobyl power complex exploded due to unstable and low power levels. Reactor 4 had been shut down a day before due to maintenance, and the next day at 1.23 am, it exploded and radioactive debris just compiled of fuel and reactive components just rained down all over the building. It was horrible. Toxic fumes were carried from the wind, and just after 4 months, 28 workers had died just due to radiation exposure alone. Now, eventually, they had to evacuate over over 100,000 residents, and to this day, that zone is a no-go. Reactive 4 will stay highly radioactive for another 20,000 years, so photos for now, but if we get close, it's not gonna end up well. Number eight. Area 51. Remember that Area 51 raid, you know, when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? How did that go again? At least 2,000 people came to a festival in Rachel, Nevada, located near the gates leading to Area 51. Yeah, we could only get so much time off of work. We decided that consequences don't exist. Power in numbers, I guess. Nice. Love the glitter and spandex. That's good. So we didn't raid Area 51 because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. It wasn't as easy as a hashtag, you know? But why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What was the goal here? Well, these controversial photos show that there's more than meets the eye in this Nevada military base. Located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada, if you wanted to take a look at this place from the skies, say, I don't know, satellite imagery, well, it wasn't until 2018 until those pictures were uncensored. Honestly, when you UFOs were on the news recently, I thought that was the end of it. I still don't know how I feel about Area 51, but next time we raid them, let's get more than 30 people wearing flip flops. Just an idea. Number seven. North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island here is home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why? Is there a resort on it? Is there some sort of Bahama Michael Jackson suite that you can't swim up to? No. Located in the Bay of Bengal, North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers from India, and while most islands are shrinking, this one actually grew back in 2004. That's right, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. The inhabitants on this floor floating cursed island are amongst the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire, yet this tribe has thrived. If we try and get close, they try and drive anybody away. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives simply because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government at this point didn't roll up to the beach and start interrogating locals. Instead, they just made it forbidden to go to completely. And honestly, that's a great call. There's other islands. Just go to Center Island. I don't know go anywhere else. Number six, Lascaux Caves. There's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. Those paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at and they were created from humans roughly 20,000 years ago, but it's now considered a world heritage site. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there to write Jordan was here in Sharpie, you better think again, cause it's not open anymore. And there's a good reason for it. Aside from paintings and clues to humanity's earliest, these caves are home to ancient bones and tools. So it's pretty much an old graveyard as well. It's 
very haunting. The cave was opened originally to the public in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. You have to be so tender with these ancient pieces of art. The small opening that led to the cave originally was enlarged to make room for visitors and such, but even the change of airflow after that deteriorated some of the paintings. Number five, the Paris Catacombs. As above, so below is an underrated horror film. A team of explorers accidentally go too deep when exploring the Paris Catacombs, and in turn, they have to face their own hell. Well, it's not too far-fetched, it seems. What feels like a never-ending maze, the tunnels under Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. Originally, the tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. See, cemeteries started to fill up, literally. At this point in time, humans weren't too clean. I mean, bodies were literally just laying on the side of the road, and they started to pile up, so the solution was to use these catacombs. These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. And by good use, I mean arguably the scariest basement in the world, full of bones. Number four, Island of the Dolls, Mexico. The Island of the Dolls, honestly, that already sounds Horrible. This island is famous for having dolls or doll parts just spread all about. Now the islands that surround this one are inhabited, they're fine, but this one is said to be filled with demonic spirits. Specifically, the spirit of a young girl who drowned there way back. It's like Camp Crystal Lake, but with even more plastic. These dolls are hanging or nailed to trees, and these dolls have to come from somewhere, and they all came from a local resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera. He put up all these doll parts in order to try and ward away those demonic spirits and keep the island bare and just abandoned, just keep everybody away from this. And you know what? A bunch of doll parts ought to do the trick. To this day, nobody dares to approach the island. They would much rather snap a pick from far away on their canoe, which is a great idea. If it didn't look haunted before, it definitely does now. Great call, Julian, but the doll parts couldn't have just used smudge sticks? Okay. Number three, Pluto's Gate. Also known as the Gate to Hell. Neat. These runes discovered in Turkey back in 1965 are beautiful, but obviously cursed. Historians believe that this site is the ancient city of Hierapolis, and if you're thinking about visiting these eerie runes, well, you better leave the family pet at home. Any animal that enters these ruins meets instant death. Sparrows were tossed in, and then they immediately stopped breathing and dropped. Scientists have figured out the solution, they think, and it's still pretty haunting. They measured the CO2 concentration, and it turns out that while the sun is up, it burns away this gas, but at night, when the temperature drops significantly, because that's what happens when the sun goes away, science. The CO2 becomes heavier than air and it creates this deadly gas cloud on the floor. And then when the sun rises back up again, the concentration of CO2 hits 35%, so now it's deadly enough for animals and even humans. Just stay away from anything called the gates of hell. There's a start. I don't know, we could have figured this out way sooner. Number two, the Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And some of my favorites always have a similar theme. They always have this post-apocalyptic feel. There's like shelters with survivors or vaults. It's stressful, but engaging. In real life, we have a global seed vault, and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. Sounds scary, and it looks scary too. This is where humans are storing food crops. It contains 100 million seeds, so if the earth all of a sudden gets wiped out, or even if all the ice melts, this vault will still be good to go. It's built high enough on a mountain so it won't drown. All that water that's just flooded the rest of humanity, well, ideally it'll regrow the earth. Sounds like a fun, cute way to get humans to think about the future, but I'm kind of concerned here? Is there something we don't know? Is there an asteroid on the way? Why is everybody involved in this so soon? Are we in a fight? Number one, tomb KB-55. Okay, we talked about a creepy tomb, now we gotta finish with another creepy tomb. Located in the Valley of Kings in Egypt, tomb 55, otherwise known as KV-55, was discovered by Edward Ayrton back in 1907. And the reason we call this tomb by a number, rather than, you know, a name or a king, is because we really don't know who or what is inside. Even the sarcophagus, we're like, ugh, bones, definitely bones. We don't know about this one at all. Even the walls inside, they aren't like other tombs covered in ancient hieroglyphs, tipping the reader off on the noble history of the king that lies before them, here there's nothing. The only hint that remains here is one hieroglyph and it translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Sick! Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out of that tomb. Usually with these ancient Egyptians, it's the opposite. It's made so that grave robbers can't get in. The description for whoever's inside the tomb has also been destroyed, so we literally have no idea who or what is in KV 55. 